What is going on, everyone? The Intellivision Gamer here with episode 10 of the Intellivision Show. So before we get started, I want to invite you guys to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm starting to get in the routine of posting more there, um, things related to the show and others. Uh, also, if you give this video a like and consider subbing to the channel, I would much appreciate it. Uh, so today we're going to talk with BD Retro Mods, Brian. We're going to go over some arcade sticks. And I have, I think, every single one of them here to show you and a few for other consoles. Uh, we are going to do a mail call. We are going to talk about uh, the news for this week. We're going to talk about the Homebrew Awards. And the main part of this show, we are going to talk about and play every single game that we are voting on. Of course, we're going to have a Homebrew highlight in there as well. It's going to be Ninja Odyssey. I'm going to show you a few other things and where you can get them and buy them. We have a new game in the works. If you guys haven't seen that yet, it's a quick little video. I'm going to show you that as well. Uh, I believe that's about it. So let's go ahead and do a quick show update. So as you guys know, Papa Pete is on right before me. His time varies a little bit. And instead of going later, which is really hard, I have some people that already don't want to come on because it's really late if you're on the East Coast. I get done like 12.30 in the morning if you're East Coast. So I am going to be shortly after I finish the next few shows, depending on if the guests can move to Mondays. I'm going to be moving to Mondays, and it's going to be 5.30, so it'll be one hour earlier. That should be better. I'll be on my own time schedule, and it'll be a little earlier to boot should be easier. Uh, like I said, this is going to be dependent on whether or not the guests can move, but for sure, after a few shows, I'm going to be moving to Monday. Um, I got a lot of good things coming up. I, like I said, I've got a lot of shows in the works. Um, we've got guests like Rick Reynolds uh, and Televisionaries Podcast. Mike's Gaming Gal is going to be on. Brian's Mad Cave, Sibling Rivalry. Uh, we got TJ Ferreira. He's going to be on in a few more episodes. Um rest of the show stuff. I'm working on doing things a little bit better. I'm still, I have a lot to learn. So I'm getting things set up like different backgrounds, um, learning how to go through these things quicker and transfer back and forth. So the show's a little more seamless. Um, I'm finalizing the Jeopardy show. I'm really kind of excited about that. I do uh, horse racing live and we are going to be doing uh, Intellivision Jeopardy show soon. Got a few more things to work out. And we're going to give it a test run on the show. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. If you're someone that would be interested in that, I'm going to start a list of potential guests for that show. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And like I said, whenever we do the tournaments, there's going to be some cool prizes I'm going to give away. Like say we had 15 people. We're going to go through three at a time. And then the champion at the end is going to win a pretty awesome prize. Uh, I want to give back a little bit. And I hope you guys are enjoying the show. It's been a lot of work putting this thing on every week. Um, I do something for it every single day, you know, finding things to put on here, getting things ready. And then usually it's like a mad dash the last few hours when I get home the day of the show, trying to get everything finalized. So um, I hope you guys are enjoying it, watching it develop. I plan, I have a lot of big plans, but very little time to uh, implement them. So slowly but surely we'll be getting it. So let's go ahead and get into the news. So the Homebrew Awards, they just opened up, and I am a new member on that committee, and I'm very excited to be a part of it. I love being a part of everything on the Intellivision community that I can get, and so that's something new for me this year. Um, we're not going to get into the awards too much, though, because later in the show, we're going to talk about it. We're going to have a chat discussion. Um, we're going to go over all the topics and what games are what in case you haven't seen it yet. And we're going to show you, I have every single game, including, I don't believe anyone's played Melody Blaster 2. I have everything set up. Just going to have to plug it in here. I'm going to show you, like I said, everything that we're voting on. I'll show you that game at least for a few minutes. So you got to vote for every category and each one's its own link. That was a, I kind of boo-booed. I, I had a link and I clicked it. I'm all, what? That's it? So, you know, I'll show you guys how to do that just in case someone got lost there. Um, Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition, as mo most of you guys already probably know, that game got the green light. We made it over 100. Nobody knows the exact number, but uh, we made it. We're going to get the CIB treatment um, later in the show. I'm going to play it for you guys. 
I'm going to show, you know, the email off. I'm going to show you guys what's in the zip file because I got mine early this morning. Um, they are going, these are all custom because it is, the ROM has your name on it as I'll show you. So everything's going by the order in which you ordered it. So I was the first order. I got mine early this morning. Um, it's going to take a while. So watch your email. Definitely. Very excited though that that one made it. I mean, it just, I was really wanting that CIB treatment. So we still have, let me touch on this a little bit more. Let me show you guys here. I've already shown you all this. Talk about it. So we've got some games still for sale. Do not forget, check them out. We've got Xerian, Naughty Boy, and the Goonies from opcodegames.com. Uh, they are for pre order. They'll be shipping in the summer. Uh, make sure you check those out. Support these guys. He does so many great things. You know, and television is just a side part, ColecoVision and other things that uh, he does. So definitely go check that out. Uh, we also still have Napoleonic Wars. And you can get that one from Homebrew Inc. at hotmail.com and tell them you would like to purchase Napoleonic Wars. So in an upcoming episode, I think it's two out, um, we're going to have Brian's Man Cave and Mike from Mike's Gaming Gala on. And we're going to talk about the game. We're going to show it, unbox it. They're going to, I don't really know how to play it yet. I've been saving it. So they're going to instruct me. We're going to go through and play a game. It's going to be the homebrew highlight for that one. And then it uh, should be interesting. I've been wanting to check it out, but I've been kind of saving it to show it, you know, live on the show. Um, so another thing we've still got, we've got, uh, you know, a Don Toledo's soundtracks. These things are awesome. I've got every single one he's done. You pop these in. It, he does such amazing work. He does a lot of games. Uh, his work is all over the place. You just may not know it. So there is an Atari Age post. And if you search right here on Atari Age, uh, I don't even know how to say that. Neon Deers in television soundtrack CDs 2024. If you haven't seen it, the link is up on the or the <laughs> the information's up on the screen. Search on Atari Age, and I will put the link in the description afterwards. And you can find that, and you message them, and you can order. Uh, the CDs. They're highly recommended. So next up, we got the weekly game challenging television invasion. Uh, so last week's game was Zaxxon. I've never really played Zaxxon and I wanted to enter it. I'm trying to enter all these. It's a good way to play a game. Uh, right now, the winner was Rick Weidman. That guy, the Rickster, he wins a lot of stuff. And if he doesn't win, he's right there at the top. Very good intelligent player. So on Zaxxon, he scored 48,700 points. He was 8,400 points ahead of second place. Uh, congrats to Rick on the win. Uh, there were seven players that committed uh, submitted the scores. Uh, I did mine. I was 31,400. I think I was third out of seven. Uh, not bad. I kept feeling like there was going to be a lot better score coming. And I just, I'm like, man, the game's kind of frustrating, to be honest. If you guys have played it, I'm sure you understand. So this week, he picked Safecracker. So until Sunday, March 31st, that is what everyone's playing. And as I looked right before this, there was only one person with a score submitted, and that was Kevin Schultz with 15,400. So uh, if you have a way to play, you just need to take a picture of your screen when you're done and post it on the Intellivision Invasion group. There'll be a post. It should be pinned towards the top. You just submit your picture. That's it. And it's a good way to play these games. You should definitely check it out if you have the game and you're in television. You don't even need any of the equipment to stream, just your camera. So here is something I just saw today, and I added it in. Let me bring it up. There's a new game in the works. So this person, I don't know who it is, but I saw him on the group, and he saw the Mario Brothers game and was inspired to do this. And if you've seen it, you're already going to know what I'm going to show you here. Um, here we go. All right, so this is Guiana Sisters for Intellivision Test. It's just, I'm going to let you watch the whole thing. It's only 44 seconds. Um, I hadn't heard of this before. Maybe you guys have. So let's go ahead and give it a quick listen. Can't remember if I have to have my volume up louder for this one. Oh, yeah, there's no sound. If there's sound, it's very faint. Forgot about that. So as you can tell, definitely Mario Brothers inspired. Like I said, I knew nothing about this game before today. Maybe you guys have heard of it. Let me know in the comments. 
and we'll go through chat here in a second. It's kind of late for uh, Brian, and I moved a little later, so I'm getting through the news. We'll say hi to chat, and then we'll have him on to talk about the controllers, and then I'll move on with the rest of the show. And there it is. Early game footage for an upcoming in television game. And have you guys ever heard of that before? I have not. So one last thing too, forgot to take that off. <laughs> uh, the, Coleco, the Collector Vision Club. So I join that every year. A lot of Intellivision collectors do. Um, you get access to the ROMs vault when you join. That alone is worth it. it they are ColecoVision games, but they're usually really good games, very well packaged. Um, this Sunday is the last day that you can sign up. Whenever you do that, you're going to get all these great games. You're going to get a magazine. Um, I believe that was it. But you also get access to the ROMs vault for many consoles. And there are so many good ROMs on there that you can load, play on emulators. They're not protected. You can play them on anything, however you want. So definitely worth it. Again, you have till Sunday. Uh, go check that out. I'll put the link in the description as well. I didn't have that one ready. I saw it literally like a little before we ever came on. So this is just a little tidbit that was kind of cool. So Caleb, we've had him on a few times. He uh, messaged me and he's all, guess what? Just something cool I thought you would like to hear. You know, he sees all the analytics for his website. And the Intellivision Gamer was the number one clicked on from his links on his website. I just thought that was kind of cool. You know, there's like, I don't know, eight different places that he has links to. And I was on the top. I'm like, didn't expect it, but I, I just thought that was cool. So let's go ahead and go through chat here. We've got to catch up. So Retro Bliss Gaming, what is going on, sir? What's up, my Intellivision nerds? 8-Bit Widgets, Caleb, welcome. He's printing up a test enclosure for the Just Arrived Flashback to Intellivision Adapter PCBs. I've, I see we stay in good contact, and he shows me all his stuff. And it's like, man, I, we'll have him on again. It's always good to have Caleb on and show us what he's working on. He does so much for the community, some of which we don't even really know about. Welcome, Kurt Bradshaw. Nice to see you. PJ Smith, my good buddy and my bowling partner. Eric Lamb, what is going on, sir? Salvador's here. Good evening. We've got Cyrus, Super Mega Graphics 64. I'm here. <laughs> Sean, what's going on, buddy? One of my oldest good friends, the collecting nerd just like me. IR Geek, welcome back. Yep, Mondays sound great. Uh, you know, there's no Astro Smash Mondays. Even if something comes back, they go four to a little bit after five. So it's not going to affect either one. Um, we're going to be doing golf on Thursdays, I believe. Uh, that that's where we were playing the bowling league. So thank you, Kurt. Appreciate it. I am getting better each time, getting a little quicker, doing things, trying to, you know, implement new things as I go. There's just only so much time between my racing, YouTube, collecting my kids, family time. I try to squeeze it all in and do the best I can. Um, I do have lots of plans every time I'll be at work and I'll be thinking of something. I'm like, I whip out my phone. I go to my list and I put it on to do list for the show. Uh, nothing. I'll run it by a few people. Some of you know that I'll send you a message and, hey, what if I did this? What if I did that? You think this would be cool? And I add it to it. So I try to continuously get new things in there. Mike, what is going on, sir? Thanks for coming by. Getting better all the time. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. Between the sh you know this show evolving and working all into one, um, the different shows we've got horse racing. I think the Jeopardy show, man, that's I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to do some green screen where I'm kind of standing off to the side and the contestants will be there across like Jeopardy. Um, it'll be all in television themed. We've got I've got people in the background working on all different levels of clues for the game. It's going to be a lot of fun. I, I mean, I'm really looking forward to that one. That one's going to be just as fun for me as it is for you guys playing. Great show. Always looking forward to it. I appreciate that, Eric. Eric recently acquired an Intellivision console and a lot of games. Uh, I'm going to send him a few more, and he is going to start hopefully getting some homebrews as well. There's a lot of good games out there. I told him 
You need to know. You just ask me. I will help you. Retro Bliss Gaming, scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Are you, is that what I was talking about, Mike? <laughs> he likes to pick on Mike. The Dreadnought Factor is greater than Zaxxon. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that game could be a little better. I had a hard time with it. I just really wanted to get somewhere other than last. So I did give it, you know, several tries. Yeah, Rickster, Rickster 8 is pretty good. He he's pretty I haven't seen one game that he's not good at. So I mean he's he's up there for sure. I don't know if he plays if he's that good at other games besides in television or if it's mainly in television games. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, Space Raid. I have uh three different variants of it behind me. I almost did the homebrew highlight for that tonight, but I'm like, yeah, I've had enough of that one for a bit. So I picked another game that I like, and it's a really good game. And for those of you that do not know, I'm going to tell you how to get that game in two different formats. And that is something fairly new. And we'll get to that here in a bit. Eric Lamb, famous old game from the Commodore 64. Oh, yes. Much like, uh, I believe, Ghostbusters started there, right? I, I didn't have the old computer, so I think I had it on NES first. <clears throat> PJ says it looks nice and fluid. <laughs> Yes, that, that game does. You guys are talking about uh, that one I showed you, the little 45-second video. Um, I, I hadn't seen it before this morning. Yep, a port of from the C64. And there's Mike. Yep. Yeah, so you're in that club too, huh? I mean, that club is amazing. Whether you like uh, you know ColecoVision games or not, they're great games to play, collect. You know, you get a magazine, the ROMs Vault. That was the first reason I joined. You know, I wanted the ROMs Vault. I keep begging them, please do an Intellivision Club again. You know, we have the Intelli Club now, which hopefully we'll get some more news on that on the show soon. Welcome, Michael Hayes. Good to have you, sir. I know you're going to be very excited at a game I'm playing today and going to show off. Uh, we've been talking about it for a while. And no, it's not FUBAR or Kool-Aid Man, Michael. <laughs> Tim, what is going on? This is Tim Linder, Lindner from uh, Sibling Rivalry, and they are going to be on very soon in an upcoming show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, sir. Tim is here. He usually pops in now. Rickster is here. This is the guy we've been talking about. Rick Weidman. Big Doomer, what is going on, sir? Thanks for stopping in. All kinds of people here. Appreciate the support, guys. Oh, here we go. With that list of contestants, I think we need... Yeah, so that was a mock-up. I don't know that any or all of those guys are going to uh, you know, be on the show, but one of my good buddies, he did a mock-up to kind of show what we could do, and you know, he pulled people that, you know, are big in the community. And it was it was definitely an intention getter. Um, I hope that they come on. I think it would be fun to have some people like that on there for the show. They definitely have a lot of trivia knowledge. I can tell you that. Yep, Ghostbusters and the great Giannis Sisters C64 games. Yeah, I mean, I have some C64 stuff now, but I never played it as a kid. Cyrus says, Casey, if you get any more stuff, that addict's going to cave in. Hey, there's not a lot in here. Most of it is in those big 27-gallon black and yellow tubs, uh, very well organized and stacked about seven feet high, and there's a giant wall. Some of you might have seen that picture before. I've shown some of you. Uh, someday when I get my permanent game room, because this one's still temporary, um, I'm going to put a second story in my shop, and that is whenever you're going to see some stuff. I will have all my, like, Artwork, wall hanging stuff. No wall plants, though. We don't do that here in the States. That's a Canadian thing. Uh, at least I think. You know, I'm going to have all kinds of cool stuff besides the games like you see now. Yes, Michael. Yes. You are correct. I have everything here to finally show it. Uh, if you're going to be in here, I might need some help on that one. I, I made sure everything worked, and I've got it here. I'm going to do that one last, and I'm going to set it all up and play it. But I don't know what I'm doing in that one. So 
I just barely got it all hooked up. And it's one of the games that we're voting on, so I have to play it today. All right. That's going to be a big help, sir. All right. So we've said hello. We're caught up in chat. So now we're going to welcome our, our guest for tonight, and that is Brian of BD Retro Mods. Welcome, sir. Hey, Casey. How's it going? Pretty good. Uh, so I asked you to be on the show. Uh, we've talked many times. We've been on other shows together. You know, you're, you're an outstanding guy in the community and across a bunch of different consoles. But what I mainly wanted to show off and, and focus on today is all the stuff that you've done for the Intellivision console. And then we'll touch also, I'd like to show off because I have some of the other uh, Gen 2 stuff that you've made. And I want to show people your YouTube, your Facebook, your website, you know, how to contact you basically. And for people that don't know who you are, they're going to know after tonight. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your gaming background, and then we'll get into the controllers. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, this is probably about my third year now um, doing controllers. But, uh, you know, prior to that, um, I've always had, um, you know, a, a tinkering thing with when it came to retro consoles. You know, I always wanted to just on my own stuff, you know, get them modded up, uh, to be able to use for uh, modern consoles. And uh, a while back, I got a hold of a, a Sega Master System for for a really good price. And uh, um, during COVID, you know, I had more time to play it. And as much as I love the system, I just I really didn't like the controllers on it. And uh, so that's where then I just started, you know, tinkering like, hey, is is there a way to have a better option? And ultimately, you know, my first uh, controller I made was for the Sega Master System. And, uh, you know, once I made that arcade stick and enjoyed it a lot, I'm like, man, can I do this for the Atari? Can I do this for the Nintendo? And it just, you know, continued to go from there. And, and then as I was making them, people were interested in them. And I decided to start making it then available for the community, you know, for those that don't, that aren't comfortable to make their own controllers or, um, you know, or just want them already done for them that, uh, you know, I just kind of put it out there because this is kind of a hobby thing for me. I mean, obviously this is not my full-time job or anything like that. I just, I do this as a kind of a service for the, the community to help have uh, modern controller options uh, to keep retro gaming going. So just curious, like, because I couldn't just make a controller. Like, what is in your background that, though, that you know how to do these things? Did you just like YouTube some video, you know, some videos, and learn how to do <laughs> it? Or, I mean, do you have some kind of knowledge already, and you decided to start working on them? Yeah. So, I mean, I already have a technical background. Um, you know, my uh, yeah, yeah. No, I I I I went for to college for you know tech, computer science and technology, and uh, uh, so I already had. Uh, you know, experience in that. And just, uh, from there it was, uh, <laughs> uh, you gotta love Mike and Phil going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Phil, Phil, Phil's a, a great patron and friend and very supportive of all the stuff I've done. And, so uh, just for real quick, uh, retro bliss, Phil and Mike's gaming gala. Uh, these guys do a show Tuesdays and they're usually all on together. And I always have to catch it on the, you know, the next day because I'm always prepping like a madman. So maybe, I'll be able to catch, you know, different shows that I'm going to be moving to Monday. But just to give let people know that, you know, who's uh, the banter is coming from. So go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. And, and with that, just a quick plug, because Phil, Mike and I do our own podcast every Tuesday, uh, the Retro Bliss Rewind, which uh, you can find on Retro Bliss Gaming or it's multi uh, streamed on Mike's Gaming Gala's page as well. So I uh, highly encourage you guys to check that out. But uh but no, back to your question though, it's just, you know, a lot of it is was tearing apart these original controllers, kind of see how how do they work. Um, you know, doing some investigation online, obviously, uh, different things to get an understanding for it. And um, especially when you start talking about some of these earlier consoles and stuff, you know, a lot of them are very similar. Um, you know, there's just some different pinout changes, things like that, that uh, um, helps uh, once you understand how to kind of do one, it kind of just you know, worked itself out on the others. Oh, very cool. Um, so I want to show, let me move it over here. I want to show your website, your Facebook, and there's no title in there. That's got to be yours. Yep. You can see it in the background behind our videos. 
And here is the website, or sorry, the Facebook. Where are we at here? This is the BD Retro Mods Facebook. It's going to just have lots of controller pictures and different information. There's a good one right there. So if you haven't already followed BD Retro Mods, there it is. Go check it out. Like the page. You can see I have right there. Uh, now we'll go one more stop here. I And for those of you like... I need to find a better way to go through these. I just thought of a good way that I could go through groups of websites. So I'm going to open them all one by one in the order, reverse order that I need them. And instead of going back and forth, share not, I'm just, I can open one window and whenever I go and I go to that one and then I'm going to the next one, I'm just gonna hit back and it'll go in the same window and I don't have to do all this start stop stuff. I'm going to try it next episode and see uh, how it works. <laughs> I think it'll work, but I haven't tried it. All right. I believe that one's yours. So here is the website. And you can cycle through some of the different stuff that he makes on here. Uh, you can click on controllers and accessories. I see several that I have. Ooh, I don't think I have that one. <laughs> I'm going to have to go uh, Ooh, that one too I'm going to have to go uh, order some stuff here So there's an Etsy shop That one I didn't have up I don't think I knew about the Etsy shop so how Yeah, you yeah. so I, I got two ways right now um, You know, at some point I might do some other options as well But right now um, I do have the Etsy store um, For those that rather go through a service like that um, Or you can... Uh, just email me directly and, and I can uh, do orders that way. So, um, but yeah, those are the uh, two options that I have right now. Okay. So these open a new window, but mm -hmm. the, I'm going to do that anyway, because I want to see the YouTube channel. So the YouTube, when I'm clicking these, it's uh, opening a new window, which boots me out. So I'm going to have to redo it here real quick. This is what I'm talking about. Getting a little bit of better way to go back and forth on this. I have not learned that yet. <laughs> so here's the YouTube. It's a learning experience for everyone. It, you yeah. Know, it's, it's I like to good. show it, not just talk about it. I want to show so you can see what the page looks like or show the products. I don't want to just talk about them. Uh, so I got to learn to do a little better with that. What the heck? I know I'm subbed. I must be subbed under my regular name and not. I think, uh, I think you are. Yeah. <laughs> we'll fix that right now. I'm like, I know I'm subbed. So this is the YouTube channel. He does little videos and shows off. You know, the things he's working on or is making. So there's he's on all the different social medias. Uh, make sure you follow him. They're all BD Retro Mods. If you search it, you will find him. Let's see. So now I want to show. I have some of the stuff here. And I, we're going to show. We're going to actually use one of them. Let me make. I did this earlier. So I could show off the controller. I got it wound around the everything. There's so many different things ready to use. So this is my special custom version that you made with the different controls and the different button layout that I requested. And this has a four-way gate. Is that the correct terminology? Yep. Four-way yep. gate in it. So I bought this one specifically for like, uh, you know, Burger Time and all those kind of arcade games where I just want four-way. And to be honest... I did all this before I ever tried any of them. I have tested all of these. I have zero issues playing the eight way on Burger Time. I did not go the wrong direction one time. So we're gonna throw up Burger Time here. Give me a second and you're gonna see the controller in action. Um, I need to switch my camera really quick to do this. Let me see here, two cameras. Switch it over. I got tons of different things to click as you cycle through all these things. All right. So burger time. All right. Now I'm going to pop you guys in here. Let me switch cameras. OBS virtual camera. It's a great thing. Why am I so little there? <laughs> I'm not supposed to be that little. I think there's a way to make you full screen on on stream yard yeah that's 
I can do full screen. I had this set up earlier. It's weird. Like the camera's moved from where it was. I know. I, oh, you know what? OBS has been crashing for me lately, and I wonder if that did it. So I'm going to pop myself over like this so we can see a little bit better. Um, that is weird. Oh, you know what? The camera is locked. That's what's going on, too, because that where you're seeing my phone, that's from earlier. Right now, I've got the controller sitting there. <laughs> Technical difficulties. And I promise you, I had all of this stuff <laughs> set up and tested before. Let me close out of it really quick, guys. Oop, before I do that, I better switch back over. I had all of this worked out before I started, I promise you. <laughs> I'm going to switch back to my cam. Because whenever I restart OBS, I'll just go black screen. Deactivate, reactivate. That is what I'm doing. Yes, Luke. I'm like, I have not worn my Intelligent Collector shirt in a while. It is due. So I definitely had to throw that on. I try to cycle all my shirts. I believe I have like 70 different gaming shirts. Unfortunately, like 20 of them, I started gaining a little weight. And I was on the verge of extra large double X. So a lot of them are duplicates and a different size. So if I lose weight, I'll still have some other ones that I can wear. <laughs> So, all right, let me go over and switch over OBS off and back on. I got to stop the camera. Oh, boy. <laughs> I spent a lot of time making sure this kind of stuff didn't happen. <laughs> it's restarting. See, now and that's what's weird. Now I'm humongous. Remember how I said my picture was really small? Uh, now I am I was like the whole screen almost. All right. So now we're good. Now we'll come back. Let me start the virtual camera. I just recently learned how to do this virtual camera trick and use it in StreamYard. And a big thanks to Cyrus, Super Mega Graphics. He is the one that taught me how to do it. And I love being able to do that. Let me switch over. There we go. Whenever we first did that, I'm like, why the heck is my phone there? I literally had to look down going, what the heck? I'm looking at the controller. What's it doing? Let me catch up on chat here. <laughs> you get Brian on and then you aren't even prepared. Uh, I, I was prepared. The technical difficulties, you cannot blame me for those. And it is a, like Tim says, it's a live show. Things are going to happen. It, it, it happens. I mean, on, on the on our own podcast, we, we have technical issues as well, as well. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so Sean's one of my buddies that I always send stuff to or run stuff by him. I've known him 20 something years. Uh, he's all, yep. He sends me samples to view. It's like, he's one of the first ones that'll get stuff, whether it's, you know, if it's something I'm like, yeah, I don't know if anyone's going to like that. I'll show it to him first. Cause he won't judge. He'll just tell me, yeah, that's dumb. Or yeah, that, that could be cool. <laughs> don't blame me for this. No, I'm not blaming you for the, for that stuff, I'm I'm uh, giving you credit for showing me how to be on the screen, showing the controller, and still showing the game in StreamYard, something I could not do before you. I really appreciate that. Learn something new all the time. PJ Smith says it's Cyrus. Cyrus's fault that I got a little better at this. That's definitely true. No, we have fill issues. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Being on the show, you guys go watch these guys. The back and forth, it's great. Um, if you guys didn't see it, I was on their podcast last week and the topic was in television. I had a lot of fun, um, you know, on the show with these guys. There was four of us. Uh, it was an hour long. They do a little, sh they do a proper link show. I try to get it all in. I just never can. Yeah, he says, I'm still in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a way to treat our bowling partner. Yeah, so my bowling team, if you guys don't know, Super Mega Graphics Cyrus and PJ Smith. And, and I forgot to go over that. Um, I actually didn't have the scores. And I'm like, well, it's too late now. But uh, we pretty much got our butts whooped on the last week. Um, I believe that I bowled my average. Uh, I think we lost three of the four scores. And we had already were out for the seat. You know, they had already beat us. But we were trying to do good in the last week. So this Thursday, um, I forgot to mention that as well. We have playoffs. We're going to have, uh, I think it was five games, winner take all, total score. For the series by team and then the following week we're going to do a fun kind of thing we're going to have the pickup spares games we're going to do 
uh, he has some silly stuff, you know, just out of the ordinary off ball stuff, not normal bowling. We're just going to try to have some fun with it. So since I forgot about that, there you go. Giga Gamer, you've done really well up until now, but now it's time for you to feel the fury of my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that was my first major uh, little hiccup there. So I am hooked up to an Intellivision 2. You can kind of, uh, I can't reach it. I've got my cords all entangled together. Um, so I've got the Intellivision 2 because the Sears console, and I do have an adapter. I can, I have the ultimate flashback sitting here, but I have this controller hooked in to my Intellivision 2. It's just easier to do. And later, whenever we're playing all the games that are for the awards, I have some that I have to play in cart form because I do not have a ROM for them. And then the bulk of them for East and Quick, you know, not make the show go too much longer. I'm going to be playing on my Ultimate Flashback where I have the ROMs. Just be better for everyone. Okay, so here we have my Sanwa joystick, Sanwa buttons. Um, this is the Intellivision controller. I opted for these buttons. I believe there's different options. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there's different color options, yeah. Different color yeah. options. Yeah. Uh, are, are people still able if they want different buttons and joysticks or is that just something you kind of did for me as a favor or how does yeah, that work? Yeah, no, it, it, it's pretty flexible there. So it comes down to if you want like the original layout that I had or that new layout, uh, it can be done either way and pretty much have all different colors uh, available for, for buttons and tops. So as you can, as you'll see, whenever I show you some of the other things that I've got from him besides the intelligent stuff, I pretty much go with the black and red. Once I start doing that, you can see the desk, black and red. Uh, once I go with a color scheme, just like my RC racing, I have my paint colors, my body you know, scheme. Uh, I like to stick with the same thing, creature of habit. So I don't, we didn't look into that. So this controller, like the, the base model, how much do these go for? Yeah, so right now um, the Intellivision like that uh, that one is uh, one fifteen, which is also includes shipping within the United States. If you're outside the United States, um, you know there's some extra charge to cover the difference in shipping. But uh, um, but yeah, it, and it's priced that way because it, it's a controller that takes me a good bit of time to make. It's not a, a quick turnaround on those ones. So yeah, definitely well worth it. I, I've played with them several games. I love them. Um, I mean, I have other controllers that I'll be showing uh, as well, but these are the only ones I've played with so far, and I'm very happy. So PJ's asking, how much does Collector Vision cost? Are you talking about the club, PJ, or are you talking about a controller for the Coleco Vision? just to make sure? <laughs> I think he's talking about the, the subscription, the, the club. Collector Vision. Uh, yeah. To be honest, I, I can't remember. I want to say it's a little under 200 but I know it went up after the first date went. And I believe it's three games. Um, I haven't been to it in a while. I showed it off a few shows back. I wait for it to come up. I purchase it. And I just wait for it to show up. Um, this is my third year. And I highly recommend it. Like I said, the ROMs vault alone is worth it. There's so many ROMs. And once you get them, you have them. You, they don't go away. They're not protected. You can play them on an emulator, flash cart, whatever you want to do with them. And the three games that were in the club this last time were actually all really, really good, too. Yes. And so the, they don't want you to show them so, uh, until everyone gets a chance to be surprised because you don't know all of them. They, you don't, you, it's a surprise, at least for some of them, right? Yeah. So those three is all a surprise. I mean, they'll tell you like one of the three ahead of time when you subscribe. Uh, so like last year's, uh, like they made it known it was Demon Attack, which was uh, ultimately a TI-99 port for the ColecoVision. Uh, but then the other two games that they ended up surprising you with uh, was Ghost and Goblins and Gyromite. And they yep. were both really well done for the ColecoVision. I was very impressed with them. Yep. I, I have, like I said, I have last year's, the year before, and I have bought a few of the Intellivision ones, but I did not get the club, unfortunately, and those did not come cheap. So yeah, it, Cyrus, it, it is a good deal. And the ROMs across so many different platforms, the physical games you get three. I mean, it, it's a great deal. I, I join every year without question. I don't even, I, I mean, personally, I don't even care what the games are. I'm going to join. No, it, when you think about how much homebrew physical carts usually cost it, it yeah it, it's a, it's a 
it's it is a good deal and um even if it's something you just do for a year uh like casey said it's it's to get that rom vault for all the all, all the games that they have uh up the, yeah, at that point when you subscribe so and a cool magazine too so uh Cy super mega graphic cyrus he has put out four of his own magazines I forgot to uh promote that for you um Man, I don't have a link handy. I'll try to remember to get it in the description. Are all of them still available, Cyrus, or just some of them? Now, digital, they're free. So I'll have to get the link again and put it in. You guys can check them out. They're all retro gaming magazines. Digital versions are free. If you buy the physical magazines, it is something it's set up. He does not make money on these. He did it for the love. Uh, they're great magazines. I've got them behind me. I'll show them again maybe next show. Um, I, I, I know they're back there somewhere. Uh I don't see them. <laughs> so the magazines are all still there. I'll get a link in the description. Like I said, the digitals are free. Go at least go check them out. You put a lot of work into these things and they are they are awesome. PJ says, so with this joystick, can I hook it up to my yes, you can. So <clears throat> eight bit widgets that we just had on last week. I have them here and I'll show you. Um you can go both ways now. Controllers from the ultimate flashback to the console or things like this, arcade sticks and other controllers going to your ultimate flashback. So I have uh, two kinds already. I have the longer you know, cable version adapters, and then I'm gonna sh be showing you in mail call, I'm gonna be showing you the new ones you have because I have those and I'll show you guys there after this segment. So we'll be, show we'll be seeing those in action here. So here we go. I'm gonna play a little bit of Burger Time. So again, this is the four-way gate, but I also... Just so you know, Casey, I mean, obviously don't change it at this point, but your other camera froze again. <laughs> oh, it froze? <laughs> uh, I want to say it's that Logitech camera. Well, it looks like I'm not doing anything. This thing is so good, it just plays by itself. <laughs> I can see gameplay. As long as that, so that's yeah, the game, yeah, gameplay's fine. It, it's just your bottom camera that was only showing your phone earlier uh, froze up again. That camera, oh no! Don't talk and play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone knows how hard that is, right, Mike? <laughs> he was he was uh, talking about it recently when he was playing, especially I, I, when you're I, looking at chat. Playing and talking. Yeah, so, I say this. I say this jokingly because I gotta get my joke in. Yeah, Phil can vouch for that. Phil can vouch for that. <laughs> so we're just gonna do one level here, and then we'll go back. I just wanted to show. I was hoping to show you guys. Controller stays put nicely. It feels like a good weight. Uh, the buttons feel nice. Again, this one has the Sanwa. Let me pause it here. Let me get back out. back over all right we're back so this controller is highly recommended i played several games with it um when i want to do some of the other games like i don't have one controller that just is for everything some i want to play with the four way some i'll play with the eight way some games you know like baseball you have to have a 16 direction or you just don't play it and as long as you know that going in that's the same for all of them um, I only have one controller that does 16 way and it is a prototype that I've been blessed with and I'll be showing that off in a video here shortly. I've been doing a lot of testing with it and it, it does really good too. It's a game pad, um, but get it for what it is. It is a great arcade stick. The, I mean, it's good build quality. Uh, I love the way it looks. I love how you can customize the colors. There are several. How many different colors do you have again? There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot uh, depending on the button type you want. If you, um, because I said for that particular one, you wanted official Sanwa in it, but uh, for most of my controllers, uh, I just do a Sanwa style or a HAP style uh, for for that stuff. So again, it, there's a there, we definitely have a bunch of options uh, available there. Um, I'd say right now, depend. There's probably about eight colors uh, for yeah, very for, cool for the buttons and so, and ball tops. I also did something different with my button layout. 
Uh, I have, where is it? I'm backwards here. I have the top button for the tops and the bottoms. I wanted it like they were. Uh, I don't know if that was a good idea or not, but I play fine with it. So uh, I did a different layout than normally comes, and I'll show some of the other ones here. So this is this is the standard layout here, correct? Yeah. So I actually do it in two ways. Uh, that's how I started them. But um, you know, obviously, you know, with requests like from you and some others. Um, I do that other button layout that, that you were that you just previously showed. So I can go. Well, you have top and bottom. Yeah, we can go either direction with it. So there's a third one. So I do have a few other things to show. Uh, I do have. Oh yeah. The Atari spinner and button, and I actually haven't tried this yet. I, I need to. Um, I've had it for a while, and then I have this guy, which is for Mame, right? Yes, yeah, so that's yeah, that's my USB spinner uh, USB spinner. Yeah. So I have a lot of games, arcade games on there. And I, I mean, I've yet to try this one too. I had to go find it in the box. I'm like, I know it's up there somewhere. So after you, we did the test and you popped off, I uh, went and found this guy. So I need to hook that up into my main stuff and give it a try. And this is the other one I have for the Odyssey 2. Mm -hmm. Same kind of, you can see the dust and all. <laughs> it's been over there, sitting there, waiting to be played. Uh, I believe that's, I believe that's all of them I have. Um, what other kinds of controllers do you make for what consoles? Briefly, yeah, that, yeah. Man. So, um, so I really uh, make them for for most of them at this point. Um, you know, I got as old as the Odyssey two. Um, obviously, Atari, all the Atari systems I have. Uh, different options for, um, yes, I, yes, I do have bat top options. So like, um, again, if you order direct with me, um, I do have bat top options that, that we, uh, that I can put on for you as well. Yep. Um, and then Cyrus, uh, Cyrus oh. is asking how much that main spinner controller is that I sh showed. Yeah. So the, uh, main spin spinner, um, because it does use, um, uh, GRS spinner pro in it. Um, that one is a uh, hundred dollars, and, and that includes shipping within the U.S. And that, that spinner feels so nice. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's it's awesome. And so, PJ's asking if you have any rollerball controllers. Uh, I do do a trackball controller for the PC. So again, it's using a GRS trackball in it, and uh, so I did I did make one that works with uh, Mame, Raspberry Pi, Mister. Um, but I do not have any, <laughs> but I do not have, uh, any for the actual retro consoles themselves right now. He's but, definitely uh, buying the spinner. Yeah. I, whenever I saw that one, I had to have that because I mean, a lot of games, okay. I only have this controller. Or I've got that, but spinner games, I want a spinner. I don't want to play it side to side. It's like, you got to have certain things. And that's one for me. That was, I think that was the first thing I bought from you. I don't even yeah, think, I think you were it's... making the Intellivision controllers yet. And we had talked no. about like, man, if you make some, I can, I know I can sell some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know no. I'll buy them all. Yeah, no, that, I think that was the first one because, uh, yeah, I had a friend who uh, shared it in the Mr. Community and that one really took off. Uh, cause again, it, I made it more for them and, uh, then all of a sudden, there was a lot of people interested and it's like, yeah, I can, I can do that. And, uh, um, I've, I've sold a bunch of those. And, and then just like with the Intellivision, um, you know, that one, uh, initially wasn't in plans, um, because obviously, you know, an Intellivision controller is, you know, a complicated beast. And, uh, you know, especially with, you know, knowing that you can't do 16 ways and there's other restrictions, you know, with stuff that, uh, um, but you know, I, I, you know, with with feedback and recommendations and people asking for it, you know, because again, I do this to try to help the the community. It's a hobby that I enjoy doing, and so I wanted to put something out there as an option uh, that would, uh, you know, take care of you know many of the needs that people were wanting. So, because again, like Casey mentioned, you know, there's some limitations to it, is but as long as you understand those limitations, um, it is a very good experience so yeah you don't buy the four-way or the eight-way to play 16 direction games or you know games it's like you you get different controllers for the games you want to play there's not a one you know stop 
shot choice for any that's going to work great for any game. So I have game pads, regular controllers. I have the prototype one. I have the arcade sticks from you, four way, eight way. You know, it's like uh, there's a lot of different options here. Right. Yep. And uh, but yeah, so for other consoles, uh, uh, you know, I do uh, uh, all the Atari ones, ColecoVision, um, NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, uh, and uh, clear up to Nintendo Switch. So I have one that works with Nintendo Switch and PC. You know, well, main oh, what is that? Retro Pie. Um, <laughs> it's it's on the website there. So yeah, I have a. It, it's in that <laughs> same enclosure. It's an eight button. Uh, it has turbo functionality, and uh, but yeah, it'll it'll work on Nintendo Switch, Mame, Raspberry Pi, uh, and stuff. oh, because so, the Switch it can, it's uh, corded, it'll plug in, right? Yes, yep, yep. Yes, I, oh, I, I do. I, yes, I do. Field. Yeah, so I do. I do make a, a fifty two hundred uh, controller. So um, that uh, uh, it is a digital controller. So. There's probably about four or five games that will, will not work on uh, because the original controllers were analog. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's it's that's been a very popular controller of mine, and uh, and yeah, I do I do have that option available. Okay, let's show because I had to go find it. Let's show that. Uh, oh boy, which one was it on now? Uh, I would say on my website, yeah, with the controllers and stuff. There we show go. Everything. Yep. So there it is. That is the Nintendo Switch PC MAME RetroPie arcade style combo. Uh, so I am going to be ordering one of those very shortly. Um, I have a RetroPie that's fully loaded from some large uh, Facebook group that I don't know if I'm supposed to mention. Uh, and that would be perfect for that. Great. And Phil says, yes, he does. Uh, he already, you already got an email about that spinner controller. Look at that. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I'll be sure to check it here after the show's done. Cyrus is a good dude. He plays things from all genres pretty much. Uh, let me get that off there. Yeah, I'm going to have to go. So the same thing happened whenever I had Caleb on 8-Bit Widgets. I'm like, I start going around the show and talking to him like, man, you got some new stuff that I didn't know about. It's like, I'm going to have to buy some more stuff. Same thing just happened <laughs> here. It's like, I didn't see that stuff before. It's like, you know, it's good to do these things and go back and touch bases. Or if you get something new, especially if it's in television, come on, even if it's just five minutes, Hey, I got this new product and, uh, you know, we can talk about it. Oh yeah, no, sure. Um, yeah. Cause with that, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've been very busy with controllers. So my uh, R and D time hasn't been as, as, uh, you know, much as I, I would like for maybe for some stuff. Cause again, this is a side thing that I do. Um, but, uh, but no, I'm always looking at new things, and I know some of the stuff I'm hoping to have uh, done here in the next few months and uh, ready for Korgs, uh, which is a convention here in Ohio. Um, that's uh, June 1st. Um, definitely looking at um, making uh, stuff for, um, uh, I mean, I just went, I just did, but uh, MSX, um, you know, looking at that, uh, looking at the uh, uh, Radio Shack tandy uh looking at uh getting controller for that because again there's been requests for that um trying to look at some different adapters um to work so that way um you know you you could use maybe just your favorite atari controller or your favorite master system controller on various other systems as well so um you know those are the things i'm i'm looking at because i i have um i have the uh, uh like an msx now to test on and uh, some of these other things. So I'm hoping to have some of that stuff out here in, in the coming months. And then uh, the, uh, when it comes to the television, the only other thing that I have really right now uh, would just be uh, for those that uh, would want to use, you know, have it be my arcade stick or a, another Intellivision 2 type connected controller. Um, doesn't have to be mine, but uh, I do do an adapter uh, that you can... Uh, plug into your original Intellivision or your Intellivision 3 and uh, uh, be able to use Intellivision 2 connected controllers. Yeah, which that so. opens it up. Previously, you had no choice, but with, some, with an adapter, you can pretty much you know run any controller you want. So Cyrus is asking a question about the spinner. Do you know if it works with Tempest 2000 on the big EMU Jaguar emulator or the big PEMU? 
That I do not. I have not. I have not tested that on that. Um, the only thing I would say is if you could normally do that with a mouse. So if if that emulator accepts mouse input to be as a spinner, um, then I would say most likely it would work um, because when you plug uh, that spinner controller into the computer or Raspberry Pi or any of that, it gets seen as a mouse. Um, so like the two buttons on it are technically like a left click and a right click on a mouse. And uh, so as long as it supports mouse input, uh, it should work, but I've not actually tested it on that emulator to say for sure. Eric says, yes, MSX. He's a big retro computer guy. Oh, yeah. No, I'm looking to make some uh, actual, you know, dedicated MSX controllers. And then I'm also looking at doing an adapter to where you can use a Sega Master System controller with it. Oh, sweet. Mike says, wish I could go to Korg's, but it's my wife's birthday. Yeah, that makes it rough. Uh, I heard on <laughs> your video uh, whenever you said that. And it's like this year for PRGE for me. My I usually leave Thursday morning. My daughter's birthday, because they moved it into September, is that Thursday. So we're doing the family birthday party the previous weekend. And I on my kids' birthdays, I take the day off and I spoil them from morning until night. Everything they want to eat, do, gifts, take family pictures. We do everything. So that Thursday, I'm going to be doing that. And I'm going to leave really early Friday and make it to afternoon to prge so i'll be one day short but if they ever have it on that and it's like saturday is her birthday i'm gonna have to do like you and miss that year so i'm hoping it doesn't happen but if it does you know family first and there'll always be next year or maybe i can go to one of these other ones maybe like to the midwest or something and uh see some of the people that uh i won't be able to see otherwise but yeah, I would. Speaking of Korgs, though, I would love to get some pictures, information, pictures of flyers, whatever you can give me. Um, I try to tell everyone about gaming expos because that's something that's all over the United States, and we are all over the United States. So I like to talk about it. Show. In fact, Mike's coming on when he gets back from. Uh, I forget which show it is, Mike throw it down Midwest, the he's going to the midwest gaming class. yeah the midwest that's it so he's going to come on the show that uh following the weekend and talk about it and hopefully we'll show some pictures and uh i like to show i'm going to try to show the expo way in advance so if it's something that's close by you or you want to go you have time to make reservations and you know plans vacation and then i'm going to talk about it when it's close and then if i know someone that can send me you know, pictures, information, or wants to come on the show and talk about their experience, uh, I'll be glad to do that too. Because Game Expos, man, people put a lot of time and money into those things. They are great. It's my favorite thing to go do. And they deserve a little more uh, recognition and try to promote them the best I can. Maybe we can get a few more people each year going to some of these. So where is it? Yeah, next year. Retro Bliss says next year. Hopefully they don't have it on your wife's birthday. Make sure you message them and say, don't put it on that date. <laughs> they probably will do it because you're Mike. So well, Cyrus well, said, the, well, the Mike excuse worked well for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cyrus says he'll happily test that functionality when he gets his. Awesome. Yeah, you'll have to be sure and to let me know on that. Eric said, I will be emailing you soon. I need a few controllers now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Controllers are something, Arcade 6, controllers, adapters, they are great to have. Um, sometimes I go around here and I find stuff like, oh, I didn't even forgot I had that. But that doesn't happen to me for the Intellivision, but other consoles it does. In fact, you had to remind me that, hey, you got an Odyssey controller as well. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I went and grabbed it so I could show it. I forgot I had it. So anything else before uh, we close out our chat about the, your controllers? Is there anything else that we failed to bring up? Or we've got your YouTube, your Facebook, um, or your your website. We showed off a bunch of the controllers. We talked about them. Um, sold a few, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're great products. I've used them. I can vouch. Um, I love mine. I love the buttons. I love the colors. I love how you can opt, you know, you know, uh, bleh, I'm losing the words here. I love how you can customize them. Uh, pick your colors that you like. 
uh, you know, maybe somewhat. Can you still do like button layout if they want it altered, or is that pretty much fixed? Or um, so, like, uh, if you prefer, and again, things are always flexible. But really, like, like if you prefer the joystick on the right side instead of a left-handed joystick, you know, obviously we can reverse those um, things like that. So, yeah, the simple choices. You know, it's like it's great to have that. Uh, get it however you want it pretty much within reason. Uh, Retro Bliss says, Eric, you won't regret it. I have one or 20. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have 20, but I have quite a few, and I'm, I've am seen a few more that I'm definitely going to be placing an order soon. I guarantee you that. So, well, with that, I thank you for coming on, Brian. It was good having you on, and thanks for giving a little bit of time to talk about uh, who you are and what you do. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks uh, for having me on. I, I appreciate it and help getting the word out there. Yes, sir. I appreciate what you do and everyone like you because I am not capable of such things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a collector. I will support you guys the best I can. I will tell people about what you do, but I cannot do such things. So I'm always appreciative whenever someone's making something for the community because like most everyone, Everyone's doing it for the love, pretty much. Nobody is making their living off any of this stuff. It's all about the love of retro gaming. And I, for one, appreciate you and what you do. No, thanks. And I, I appreciate what you do as well with, you know, uh, doing the YouTube channel and getting the word out on different things. Because, like you said, none of this is our full-time jobs. And yeah, <laughs> he, he does. <laughs> But uh, um, but no, I mean, again, we all do this as a hobby. And at the end of the day, the end goal is to keep retro gaming alive and going. And, and like I said, the reason why I did this is because I know I had a need for this. And I figured if I had a need, I'm sure others have a need as well. And, and that's really why I, I do the options that I do for everyone. Yeah, and the community, it's such a great thing because everyone, you know, no matter what your role uh, you have a piece of the puzzle. Some people make games. Some people make hardwares and controllers. You know, some people just do boxes. Some people do manuals. Some, you know, there's everyone has a piece. There's just collectors that support you by buying products. You know, there, you know, there's, there's all kinds of ways that we are a piece of the community. And I wish I could do more. I really don't have time to do more for one. But I enjoy collecting it all. Uh, Michael make fun of me because I have to buy one of everything. But I, I was going to say, when I look behind you, I, you're definitely doing your part. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is, this is all just a small piece of that puzzle. Uh, it's all that will fit back there in my view. But, you know, I do support anyone, and uh, I, I'm a variant collector, so it's pretty much a disease is what some collectors call it. We have to literally have one of everything. If there is a sticker on that box because it came out that way, we also have to have that one. And I fall into that category, but I love supporting everyone. And, you know, it's not just because I'm a variant collector, all this homebrew stuff. Uh, I want to support the people that make things that we love. And there's no other way to support them than to buy their products. Yep. <laughs> uh, Caleb says one or seven of everything. I can't really afford seven of everything anymore, but if I win that lottery, whoo, yes, I will. <laughs> what is it? Is it that anyone win is like over a billion dollars? It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> We're talking about doing uh, the lottery pool thing at work, and we like, we would each get like 48 million, even after all the fees and everything. I'm like, yeah, can you imagine? Like, we're a shop of 30. Yeah, 17 of us are retiring today. <laughs> they, would, they would so hate that. And, I, and I'm sure if that happens, you know, Casey will have a Kickstarter real quick on an FPGA in television console. Oh, oh yeah. One. You better believe I would, you would fund that, that 100%. <laughs> I would fund that 100%. I would love to have that. Uh, Michael Hayes says, I'd love to see somebody make and sell more consoles. Yeah. Uh, so next week, give you guys a little sneak peek. We're having uh, Rick on, and we are going to be doing, we're going to be modding a Nintendo DSi with uh, Nintelevision. I believe that was the emulator. And we're going to be playing Intellivision games on the go with your DSi. It, I've seen it. It is amazing. You have the, the lower touch screen and your overlay and your controls are down there. All the games work, and the top screen obviously is a gameplay screen. So that is what I'm doing next week. I've got everything kind of set aside over there. 
Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. So Rick Reynolds is uh, in Television Aries podcast. Uh, he does a lot of other retro stuff. He also goes to PRGE most years, and he is a part of the Intellivision Mega Booth. So he's a really good guy. It's going to be fun to have him on, and we are going to have some fun teaching you guys how to play Intellivision games on the go, and it works really well. So let me see. Mike says, me too, Michael. Iron Geek says, right on. Caleb's smiling. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> This guy's another one doing great things with lots of plans. And Cyrus says, thank you for having him on. And thank you, Brian, for all of your hard work. Thank you. Tonight I appreciate is the drawing it. Fun. So Sean knows about that one. Uh, we didn't do it this time, but we were just talking about it. Tonight is that, you know, someone's going to be very rich or a few people anyway. The emulator is fantastic. 8-Bit Widget says, at games needs to do a reissue of just their flashback controllers. Yeah, that, that would be pretty good. So they were supposed to be wired. I know you're not going to like this, but they were supposed to not need adapters. And it got screwed up, and it was too late, and they just went with it. So it would have been great, but then we wouldn't have people like you making adapters. So, <laughs> All right, Brian, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and get into mail call and the other stuff. Again, I appreciate you coming on. I know everyone loved seeing what you do and having you on, and... Uh, we got a few more people going to be buying controllers, which is awesome. That's the whole point of having you on. Oh, yeah. No, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. And you guys all have a good night. All right. Good night, sir. We'll talk to you soon. There we go. All right, guys. Well, that was great having Brian on. I hope you guys enjoyed that. He has a lot of great products across a lot of different consoles. So now we're going to do mail call and, you know, doing it every week. Um, you know, you guys were seeing these enormous mail call videos. That wasn't always, you know, a week's worth of stuff. I wish it was. But so on topic, here we go. 8-bit widgets. I wonder what this could be. Oh, I am so surprised. I didn't know these were coming. <laughs> so these are his new enclosures. It is the adapters. Now, I oh, they're buried. I have the first version, which were cables. So, and I can't pick up my flashback. But this right here, your flashback, and it goes right in there, and it just fits perfectly. So this part goes into your ultimate flashback, and you plug your controllers in this side. And he has his logo on the top these things are cool you just leave them in there and they look great i know they're going to work great i have the cable versions so that is the first thing i was going to show you guys so here is a box that i got today i thought i was going to just have two things to show you guys so some of you are going to hate me if you were bidding on this a few people always tell me why quit bidding on the stuff i want so i do have all these but they went for a fairly good price, and I picked up hockey for the Sears subset. And these are these are all purchases from Rev on his eBay store. He posts a lot of random stuff. Another harder one to get, Utopia. Paper. Basketball. So... I got basketball, not because it's hard to get, but because uh, DJC needed this game for his Sears set, and I sent him my only copy. And I did get another copy, and you couldn't tell from the pictures, but it wasn't in the best shape. Um, it was okay. So this one is in a lot better shape. So that's why I picked that one up. A couple more here. Another fun one. I did miss out on a few of them. Um, I already had them, so I didn't need to go crazy. So here is checkers. That's definitely not easy to get. And soccer. So a lot of good Sears games there. And one not so hard to get, but I needed it. So now we're, and I didn't open this yet because uh, I have got a lot of packages in weird boxes. Smashed, annihilated, open where stuff's falling out. You name it, since I've been on eBay since October of 98, right towards the beginning of whenever it got popular, um, 
I've seen a lot of things, but this is the first time I've got something in a package like this. And I smiled when I saw it. I'm like, oh, I got to show this on the show. So my stuff came in a tricks box. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck is that? And then I got closer and I was like, oh, there's a label on that tricks box. So we were joking and I'm like, I wonder if he used the cereal for peanuts. <laughs> now, I know he didn't, but it was just a funny thought. Um, I don't even know how to open this. I'm going to try not to cut myself, cut away from you. I didn't want to open this one early because I didn't know if I was going to annihilate the box. That's a lot of tape, but this is hilarious. A friggin' tricks box. <laughs> First time I've ever seen that. I've seen people reuse, uh, I mean, some Amazon boxes are okay. Some are really flimsy. And I've seen people use the really flimsy ones, and they uh, they don't hold up too well. So this is the reason that I bought this little auction. If you guys watch eBay, you will have maybe seen it. This is a catalog. Now, I have this catalog, but as we talked about earlier, I'm a variant collector. And see this little sticker right here? That is the part I don't have on any of mine. So I had to get it. Someone sent it to me in a group chat, and I'm like, I am so grabbing that. So it, it was a random thing. It came with a catalog and two games. First one, Sharp Shot. Now, when I see Sharp Shot, Cheez-Its, Carnival, I think of Rick, our guest, next week. And I'm definitely going to have to show him this. Whenever I bought it, I asked him if he wanted this, and he says, no thanks, I already have a bunch. <laughs> so the armor battle... There is something cool about this one. Uh, it was pointed out to me afterwards because I didn't even look at the games. It has a harder to get color variant for the manual. Uh, I think most people have green. So this one is a blue one. So that's always nice to have. I mean, I'm sure I have it. I probably got like 30 or 40 armor battles and boxes back there. But it's always nicer whenever you get something that's a little more rare. Could have been just the one I already have a ton of. Let's catch up on chat here. Kurt Bradshaw says, oh, checkers. I have it, but it's expensive. Yeah, I didn't pay too much for it. <laughs> PJ says, silly Casey tricks are for games. <laughs> yes, another catalog. I believe there's two versions of that catalog with a different cover. But the sticker has eluded me until now. Yep, that is Keith Robinson as Santa. Yes, it is. Welcome, William. Let me see here. It's spelled wrong. It's armor battle. <laughs> Welcome, Jim. Thanks for coming in. All right, so homebrew highlight. So it's good that you're here, uh, Miscellaneous and Television Games. That is William Moeller of Electronite. So this week... I have elected to do, I'm going to do it on the other one, Ninja Odyssey. Let me get it started up here. So many different things to show you guys today. And some of the things have to be plugged in, unplugged, so you can do something else. So this is a phenomenal game by Electronite, Ninja Odyssey. Some of you, I'm sure, are much aware of it. Some of you probably have it. This game is an awesome platformer. I'm going to show you all of it here. Here is the cart. Looks like the Activision style cart. I forget what they're calling it. Uh, that's what it looks like to me. There's the end label. Here are the overlays. So on the sides, it has attack start, attack start on the other top, and then jump start, jump start on the bottom two. And then move and bypass storyboard for the disc. And it has on the overlays copyright 2021. So it's not like some of the newer games that are doing the artwork, but it is definitely not plain in here. You've got a little bit of design inside the box. I do love the new homebrews that are putting the complete art inside. Here is the manual. That's right. Thank you, William. I, I could not think of that word. It is an LTO shell. <laughs> Use the joystick? I guess I could. 
So there is the manual. And again, this is color manual. And it's not one of those two pagers. Some games don't need a lot of manual, let's be honest. But there are some games that, you know, it's nice to have a lot of information. And sometimes it's just nice to have a bunch of information, whether you need it or not. You know, us old retro guys, we love physical media in our hands, checking out the manual. Um, I don't know how much of manual reading we did as kids. I mean, I was five when Intellivision came. I don't even remember how old I was when I learned to read. But I definitely wasn't reading too many manuals at that age. I can tell you that for sure. So Ninja Odyssey, there's the back of the box. Don't know if I showed you that. I recently have done a game challenge uh, with it. I have not played it very much. And then Kevin Schultz also, when I had him on for an interview, he challenged me to a couple games, and he wanted that one as well. He's quite good at it. He got much farther than I did. Let me catch up here as I'm turning this stuff on. I'm going to play this on my ultimate flashback because it is the one hooked up. I will play it soon on that joystick, but I'm going to really suck for one if I play it on that joystick. And two, I'm going to have to unhook a bunch of stuff and hook up the other one. <laughs> Welcome, Jonas Ness. Uh, I always like the wild artwork in those old NT catalogs. Even some of the screenshots in those catalogs look totally different than the actual games. Yeah, because some of them were, you know, they were just, you know, graphics of proof of concept, and the game wasn't even done yet. So they would just draw them so you could kind of get an idea of what the game might be. Uh, but, yeah, sometimes uh, they changed or they were just scrapped. Some of those catalogs have games that were never even released or, you know, not in for, until recent years. So it's always nice. I love paperwork. Um, that's another thing I need to get into. Um, besides showing a homebrew each week, I have a ton of paperwork, catalogs, manuals, service manuals. I have a lot of cool things to show. <clears throat> My voice is starting to go. So, you know, I'm going to be showing it on here a little bit. When I get time, I'll be throwing pictures up on Instagram and Facebook. So make sure you're on there if you want to see this stuff. Uh, I try to trying to get in the habit of putting different content on there on a regular basis. I'm just kind of getting started with the whole social media stuff other than I just don't want to post. Here's another video link. Here's another video link. I want to post content and different things too to get people uh, going there for, you know, people aren't going to keep coming and looking because of my videos. So I want some real content as well. Yes, Jim says he loved the manuals. Michael Hayes says, I read the intelligent manuals cover to cover a whole bunch and that in the boxes and catalogs. So did you do that as a young kid? Because I know a lot of us did not. Like I said, I don't even know if I could read fully at four to five years old. I can't remember. I mean, it's been too long. Jim says, oh, come on, mouse. I like hard games like Space Armada because it was difficult. See, that was a cool thing. Uh, there's a lot of Atari games. They're pretty simple to play for the most part. It's just a high score challenge. The Intellivision had a lot of depth in a lot of their games uh you know with the overlay you had a lot more buttons you had options it wasn't just you know one button and move and i love both don't get me wrong i'm not capping on anything because i love me some atari i've got a whole bunch on the other side there and there's a lot of good games homebrew games champ games if you don't know about champ games look them up champ games makes a game for the atari 2600 i buy it i don't even care what it is if they're if they make it they're that good i buy them uh, do yourself a favor and look them up. You will not be disappointed if you like Atari 2600 games. So Caleb, 8 Widget says, I remember pouring over that catalog of Intellivision games. So at the end, whenever I was already into NES, um, I remember getting the catalogs when they were doing just mail order. And I have some of those somewhere as well. Um, my original one is somewhere. You say, I don't even know how I got them in the mail. I don't remember ever sending away for anything. I have no clue how they got my address, but they did. With all the various adults behind the kids playing it, yes, there's a lot of pictures like that. They wanted to show families having fun. Cyrus says, dang it, I can't stop thinking about that spinner. Do yourself a favor. Go get it. Right here. This is the one you wanted, right? I mean, that thing, I grabbed the wrong side. It feels nice. Two buttons. I'm going to order that. I got a few that I need to order. This is the other one. This is the one for the 2600. This thing feels nice too. Uh, I plan on using both of those soon. Now that I have them out, I'm not going to put them away till I use them. That's a trick. 
If I put it away, out of sight, out of mind. If I leave it out, I'm like, ooh, I got to try that. David, what's going on? He's going to the Midwest Midwest Gaming Classic and was wondering if you know of any I need to be a homebrew sellers attending the show. Uh, other than Mike's Gaming Gala going, I'm not sure. Michael, do you have you heard? Is there going to be any anti homebrew? We'll let Michael answer. I'm not sure. I do have some people I can ask if anyone's going to be going and taking anything. Hopefully, if not, there'll be somebody there selling some. Oh, yeah, there's another one, Sean. I never did that either. I didn't do the Kool-Aid thing for Kool-Aid Man. I don't even know if I don't even remember knowing about Kool-Aid Man. Uh, so Sean did this. He cut out his game box tops for free and television games. So he had a lot of boxes of his original kid games, and they're cut up. Michael isn't going, but have you heard of anyone that is going? Will there be any in television presence there? I I want to say no. There will be in television fans and collectors and YouTubers. I'm not sure of anyone that will have a booth. And he says, doesn't mean I won't go. I just wasn't planning on it. All right, so let's get into Ninja Odyssey because we've still got a little bit to do here. So this is a game from Electronite, and I reached out to William, and he is in the chat where he was. So this game hasn't really been for sale, but if you email, let me bring that up here. Give me a second. I have it in here. So right here, order Ninja Odyssey. You can get it complete in the box for $70 plus shipping, or you can buy the ROM. Yes, you can buy the ROM direct from William and Electronite. $10 USD. Now, he's only going to ship in North America because of the high shipping costs and the issues that come with shipping overseas. So North America, $70 for CIB, $10. And that it is plus shipping and PayPal fees. So $70 for the game and the ROM. So those of you that just want the ROM, go get it. Support these guys when they do this. Do not share it. Support them. It's 10 bucks. That's how these things are going to keep happening. Uh, buy them, support them. There's a lot of you guys that just want the ROM. Some of you guys want this guy. Complete in the box. Gatefold. It's a nice game. It's a fun game. Right there. Electronite at hotmail.com. Tell them I would like to order Ninja Odyssey. And if you're so inclined, say I heard it on the Intellivision show. He will know who that is. That'll be, I think it's cool whenever that happens. Not that, I mean, I don't get anything other. It's just nice to know that you're doing something and someone saw it and actually went and made a purchase. Uh, I like that. I like making a difference in the community. I like to do something uh, to contribute. I can't make a game. I'm not a programmer, but I mean, I can't do anything with that, but I can show off the collection, bring awareness, I, I'm pretty well connected in the television community. <clears throat> I will show and talk about everything and show you where to buy it. And that, sirs, is my contribution. So let's go back over to comments. <laughs> Sean says, I drink a lot of Kool-Aid for that game. William says, I will be in Hamilton on April 3rd and could go to the Midwest Gaming Classic. Very cool. Very cool. Make sure you guys take pictures. If you see in television, guys, William Moeller, Michael, take pictures. Send them to me. I would love to show them on the show, talk about them. If you want to come on the show and talk about your experience going, I would love to have that. Uh, I am doing a show. Michael's coming on. You're more than welcome to pop in. It could be your phone or if you have webcams, talk about your experience. Send me some photos. That would be great. I definitely am making PRGE and maybe one more. I know there's a local one about an hour and a half from me. So I plan on going to that one this year. Last year I had family plans and I just, I, I could not go to it, but I hope this year it works out. Yes. Yes. It's no shooter, but it is a fun game. And we're going to show right now, beautiful box as well. European orders can be sent right now for Ninja Odyssey. European orders. You heard it from the man himself. All right. I'm going to switch over. Actually, let's see if we can get OBS to work. Oh, yep. It is doing that crashy, crashy thing again where it's all weirded out. 
And then I've got this big OBS studio quit unexpectedly. I'm on a Mac. I don't know if that has something to do with it. Bugs need to be worked out. Switch over here. I like to have, you know, different things on there than just show the game screen. Oh, now I'm frozen completely, it looks like. Give it a second here, guys. I'm frozen on my end. I don't know if I'm frozen on your end. Oh, boy. Come on, OBS. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Hopefully you guys are hearing me. Phones down here on the ground. I'm not a big Mac guy. I forgot how to kill an app. Audio's coming through? Okay, perfect. As long as you guys got something and you know I'm here, I'm working on it. Give me one second. I'll kill that app and go back to the regular way. We'll just do it the regular way. I'm done with OBS tonight. <laughs> Maybe I need to just unplug that freaking camera too. Maybe that's what's doing it. There we go. I unplugged the Logitech camera and it all just went. Huh. Interesting. All right. So give me one second here. I'll be back. Am I back? Am I back? <laughs> Can you guys see the video okay now? It's a virtual camera. Man, OBS is causing me all kinds of headaches today. And it won't show up. What the heck? Maybe I went too early. Oh, there it is. All right. No more technical difficulties, please. I've had enough. <laughs> Let's go to... I'm playing on the Ultimate Flashback. This thing is fully loaded. If you see something you shouldn't, just ignore it. <laughs> Not that. Ninja Odyssey. Here we go. I'm by no means a pro at this game, but I'm okay now. I'm going to take that off. You guys haven't seen it by now. Electronite at hotmail.com. You can order the ROM or the complete in box. Friggin' awesome game. Oh, here we go again. Give me one second here, guys. Sorry about that. I think it'll work with me in the corner. Let me make myself a little bit smaller here. Let me know if that looks okay, guys. Get this off here. For a second, I was worried I didn't have sound. All right, here is... Let me see if I can get the names off there. I'm going to take my name off. You guys know who I am. As soon as I can find it. There we go. <laughs> yeah, OBS is giving me problems. And I like using it. I just learned how to do those cool tricks. Thanks to Cyrus. <laughs> Hold it together. All right, here we go. Let me see the buttons. So the lower button is jump, and then you can shoot. So when I first played this, I was jumping over everything, like you see right there. I didn't even know you could shoot the things. I was just jumping. How's the sound, guys? Is it too loud? Loud enough? It's really loud on my end. Let me know in the comments how the sound is. I can turn it up or down. So the hearts, you can see the meter at the top. Early levels, it doesn't move too fast. 
Oh, hold on. There's a frog coming. So that meter goes down, and later levels it goes quicker. The hearts replenish that. There you go. It's back up to near full. Now, I like to go faster on a lot of games, but I'm not really good at this one. Just trying to make sure I show you guys a little bit of it. Okay, sound is fine. Good. On my end, guys, it's like one and a half times as loud as it should be. They can probably hear it downstairs. But I am doing this the wrong way. Oh, no! I'm playing. I believe all my sounds on right now are coming through the mic. Which is not the right way. And I can do the other way. But we're just not right now. Got that frog. It took me a while to learn how to get the frog. Because I didn't know how to shoot the first time. <laughs> so I was just trying to jump around. So there are things that give you different uh, suit colors. And you can have different abilities. Like when you're red, you can double jump. Um, yellow, I think, man, I can't remember, your fire bounces, like, or goes, I can't remember what it does. Different abilities, we'll call it that. There's another one coming up here somewhere, right here. Oh, you know why I'm bouncing? Because I got the red one. I'm like... So the red one's bouncing. So Mike of Mike's Gaming Gala, he is really good at this game. So is Kevin Schultz. Mike can beat it. I believe I can beat it too. I've got fairly far the last time I played. But again, these homebrew highlights, I'm not going to play for an extremely long time. I just want to hopefully show a few levels, talk about it, show off all the content of the box. There's another one of these guys. Where are you? Maybe I'm thinking of somewhere else. There we go. Now I can double jump. Which some areas are very hard to pass when you don't have that. Alright, I don't know if there's something there. Oh! Hoping to show you the boss. Lives won. Great. Now I lost my suit. Where is he? So some of it, like some games like Rick Dynamite's a lot like that. You have to memorize where things are. Got my suit. Double jump definitely helps. Now let's see. hopefully I don't die in the same spot again. Getting close, I think. See, you're like right there. I don't even know how if you can make it without double jumping. I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. I don't think there's been too much, but stage one four. <clears throat> so these, I think you can touch them, but they take away. Oh, I forgot about that. Those things hide down there. Those are ice spikes or whatever they are. Chatting, I forgot about it. Game over. I'm not going to show you a boss battle. We got to play it for quite a while. You got to see what it's about. It's a fun platformer. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's a reason I picked it. And because when I reached out, he also told me that we could offer it. You know, tell people you can get the ROM. Let me get off here. Switch over. The ROM and complete in box. And I kind of don't want to, hey, here's this great game. Can't buy it, but let's watch it. 
So now you've seen it. If you don't have it, you can get it in two forms, complete in the box or ROM. And it's definitely, you will not regret it, either one. David says, has Smurfs ever been remade as a homebrew on the Intellivision? Yes, it has. In fact, let me see if it's easy to get to here. You're not going to know. You're not going to want to know how rare it is and how much it costs to get one. It is one of the rarest. So there is Smurf Rescue and Gargamel's Castle. There is the back. Let's see if I can get it where you can see a little bit. There you go, Smurfs. Put that back. Kind of where it goes. I every time I do a show or go on with someone, I have like controllers over here, the keyboards out, unbox games are all over the place, just kind of set somewhere. So I try to put it back close to where it goes, and then I can figure out and get it back in the right spot. After a while of not having time, like when soon as sometimes as soon as I'm done with this, I'm like downstairs and I come back up and like, man, I need to just instead of doing anything videos, I need to put everything back. <laughs> all right, so. Now we did the homebrew highlight. Now we're going to talk about the homebrew awards. So let me make sure I still got these up. I got them up here somewhere. That's that. All right. So Papa Pete did some, you know, he is the YouTube guy. Uh, he is one of the people that, you know, helps bring the awards to us. He does. He spends a lot of work doing these and organizing everything and making videos. Uh, he's phenomenal at doing what he does. And I know you guys have probably seen it, but I'm going to show you those videos. Not not the videos in full length. I'm going to just show you what they are, just in case for those that have not seen them. All right, Eric, I know it's late there. Starting soon, we're going to be an hour earlier. So that should be better for everyone. I'm just going to have to get my wife to make dinner a little early because it will be early for me here. Have to eat about five o'clock, a little before. Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate you, sir. And William says, yes, the ROM was given out for Smurfs Rescue. I don't know if I have that, but I'll look real quick. I don't think I've played it if I do. Yeah, I don't have it. You mean given out with the people that bought the game? Or was it free on Atari ages? I don't know. I'm not because sometimes they do that. I don't know what you meant. Probably when you bought the game, because I did not buy it from you know the original. I wasn't collecting at that time. I took about a 14 year break. Uh, the last four years I've done all this, <clears throat> so I bought it secondhand from someone else, and it was quite pricey. But try finding one, and that is why. So let's go over here. I'm gonna show you real quick. Um, I normally have these in order. It makes it much easier to bring them up. There is a campaign result. That's for something else. Did I skip that? I did skip that. And I skipped a few things in the news. I guess we're going to talk about that first because that's kind of a big one. So I skipped over it in the news somehow. I missed it. But Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition, if you guys haven't seen... Here we go. This is Papa Pete's video, campaign results. It's about a six minute video. So we had to sell, they had to sell a hundred of them and it would go from a cart form to complete in box. That was a success. Um, we are gonna get eventually a CIB version of that and we have the ROM, but I've got a few things to show you guys today. So sweet. I would love to have that, William. I'm sure CMart would as well. What's going on, CMart? Yes, and television Smurfs. Nope, we have it too. I would love to have that, sir. You know my email. <laughs> I would love to be able to play that on there. I don't like to pull out the card on that one. So it was successful. Pete posted a video uh, yesterday, and we we're going to talk about it a little bit today. But it came a little quicker than I, I thought. I was the very first one to order the game, I believe, because they said they were going on order, and I was the first one to get it. So we are going to show you the Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition. You've seen uh, Papa Pete play it. What I'm going to show you, I'm going to go over the email that I got, and 
I'm going to show you what comes in the zip file, you know, the ROM, the box. I'm going to show you all that stuff and make sure you watch your email if you purchased it. They're going in order of how you ordered because they are all customized. So let's show you that. That is Papa Pete's video. You guys know Papa Pete. Get over there. So let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Yep. First come, first serve basis on sending out the digital versions, and that will hold you over until they get us the CIB copies of the game. Uh, I got mine early this morning. So let's show you that. I believe I have that open here. I do got to do a little switch thing here. Um, window. All right. Is that it? Get off that. So here is the zip file that you're going to receive. And let me bring up the email on my phone. I can go over it. I talked to the people, the powers that be, and they said this was fine. Share all the information. Make sure people know what's going on and show you what's in the zip. So the email I got, dear campaign supporter, thank you. Thanks to you supporting Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition campaign has been successful. Now comes the fun part. Receiving your physical products. Uh, please reply to this email as soon as possible with the following inputs. They want, so check your email. Don't think it's just done. Uh, right away, they want you to confirm your shipping address. That's a big one. Sometimes I've pre-ordered stuff and I've moved two years ago. And I've even contacted them. Here's my new address. Here's my new address. And it still went to the old one. So definitely a big one. Confirm your uh, your shipping address. Then you have to tell them, I just want the cart. I'm fine. Or I want a CIB upgrade. That's going to be $20 per copy. And don't send anything yet. You know, you, have, you know how to pay. You have the emails and all that. Wait until you're contacted. Send back this information. And then that's whenever you'll do it. Uh, if you do not want the CIB upgrade, please indicate you would like to... Uh, optional tracking for your cartridge. Uh, thanks in advance. Once we get all your information, you will receive another notification at a later date when the product is ready to ship. The estimated time frame is late May, but that is subject to change. We'll be working hard to expedite it as much as possible. At that point, we will ask you to make payments as needed. So nothing yet. Don't do it yet. All right, now it's time to enjoy some of your perks as a campaign supporter. So how about busting some ghosts while you wait for your physical game? So this is a zip included. I don't think I'm showing off any of my numbers here. Oh, there was one thing, but I won't open that. Um, there's a number code that I enter in the game, and I get extra money to start with. That was kind of a cool perk for supporting early on. Uh, okay, so now we're doing the zip. So let me see if I just open it. I'm going to have to show you these things separately. So you've got the back of the box here, and I'll, I'll open these up, and I'll show them to you. You've probably seen a lot of it before. You've got the front of the box. You've got your digital packaging uh, slip there. That might be where that number is. Um, here is the inside of the gatefold opened up. you got the manual overlay. We're going to get a supporter sticker, and I'll open that up. There's a little bit of text that you can't read on there. And here is the bin and config. And I don't know what this is, this uh, Ghostbusters-03. I think that might be an overlay for what we're doing on the DS next week. I'm not sure. Let me catch up on chat here. Sorry, guys. Uh, I love your initials, CMart. <laughs> CM. It uh, sounds familiar, CM. <laughs> People are going to get confused. Shop smart. Shop as smart. Ah, yes, Cyrus. Didn't realize that was you. Yes, that is Cyrus. Looking forward to Don reminding me how to add <laughs> my ROM. But make sure you hide that cable. Do not let him take your cable again. You couldn't use it for a long time. Can't wait to see what you're showing. I mean, you haven't opened them. Yeah, because I have to go to a different window to open them. So I'm just kind of going over the contents. And some of the things, obviously, I can't open the bin and config files. I'm not going to open this overlay. or You know, I can open the PDF. So now that I've showed everything that's in there and talked about it, I'm going to go open them, CMart. <laughs> Give me one quick second here because I don't have a quick way to do this. 
So I am just going to open one and then I have to share the window. And I'm sure, like I said, a lot of you guys have seen this on Pete's channel. So I'm going to open a few at a time and that'll be quicker. Now I have to come back and share screen. All right, window. So here is the front of the box. Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition. Very cool. So let's go to the back of the box now. I, I really need a quicker way to do this. If anyone knows, please let me know. I would love to have that. Here's the back of the box. Got a couple gameplay screenshots, of course. Information. All right. Now I need to open up some more. Stop screen. It's a little tedious to do this. Apologize, guys. So here is the gatefold. As soon as I get it up here, I'll come share the screen. I have to open it before I share. This is the inside, of course. Beautiful inside box. I love the way they're doing the gatefolds now with all that, all those cool graphics inside. It just, when you open that up, you're like, Oh, man, this is awesome. I mean, I'm happy to get them any which way, but, man, does it look cool when you open it up and you see all that inside as well as outside. Yes, that does look cool. <laughs> Maybe I can draw them with crayons. I'm not that talented of an artist. I'm kind of a stick figure kind of guy, to be honest. <laughs> I can do some cool stuff in Photoshop. All right, so now let's move on to the next one. What is next? All right, so now we're going to do the overlay. <clears throat> I'll get that one up. Get me some of these other ones out of the way here. And we'll do this cool sticker because I don't think you guys have seen this. At least not most, most of you haven't, I know. All right, so here's the overlay. Looks like a phone button setup, vacuum trap, dispatch, Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition, 2024, info and bait. So there is the overlay. So now I've got one more ready to go. This is the cool sticker. Ult Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition campaign supporter. Cool little addition there. So I can't open, I, like I said, I believe that one is an overlay for the Nintendo DSi emulator. And maybe I can show you that. Maybe next week I'll put that on there if that's what it is. Um, we're going to be doing one with Rick next Tuesday. Uh, you might want to check that out if you're interested in converting a DSi to playing television games on the go. I'm really excited to do that. I'm going to make like three or four of them actually. Uh, one next week on the show, but then I'm going to duplicate it. And I will show you guys... If that's what it is, I'll show it off next week. Really looking forward to having Rick on. So any updates on the podcast, sir, since you're in here? How's the new episode going? I meant to reach out to you again and uh, ask for an update. I know it takes a while to record all that and get it going. So the only other thing to show is the PDF, the rest of it. I'm not doing my... I can't open some of this stuff because it has my you some one of you guys will take my code and <laughs> get free money. So let's open the PDF. I'll show you guys that. I believe I I showed you guys that before, but here it comes. Here is the PDF. Same as the game cover on the front. Nice full color manuals we've come to expect. Lots of good information. Build your franchise. Right after this, we're going to show you the game. Papa Pete showed it plenty, but there's one more little cool thing that I want to show you. Ah, the back. A little bit of extra graphics there as well. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not going to OBS again. I'm not going to lock up. 
So here we go. Update for the Intelligent Aries podcast, Seymour and Rick. Hopefully recording this week, I blame Rick. Yeah, that, that, I can, I totally get that. <laughs> Oops. They definitely put a lot of hard work into this. They really did. Very good programmer as well. Yep, Mark Thompson does a great job on the manuals. He's been doing it a long time. They are always phenomenal. We got so many uh, people that play a role. You know, it's not just, you know, here's one person. Let's put out this game. It is a, I, some people may not realize this is a big team effort with a lot of people that have a lot of knowledge in each thing that they do for a homebrew game. Uh, so I can't say it enough, especially if it's a great product and you like it, please support it. Buy the CIB and the ROM. Uh, if it's not in your budget, do whatever you can. Support these guys. I want to see more games like this keep coming out. I appreciate it very much. So I've got it ready to go. I just got it when I got home. I was getting ready for the show. And I had, it's a little bit of a thing for me. I have to load it onto a stick on my other computer. Come over here, turn it on, uh, use a keyboard, get out, load the ROMs. I don't have the good way set up with the wireless. I'm afraid of messing up my ultimate flashback because I need it. So here we go. I'm going to switch over this way and we're gonna go show you guys ghostbusters one more cool thing right here watch the startup screen there it is this rom belongs to casey nidal thank you for your support so every single rom is going to have the purchaser's name in the first screen you see I mean, that's, that does, I think that does two things. If somebody shares it, they're going to know who did it. And it's kind of cool to see your name on the game. 555-2368. Five, 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 There's some of that. And Televoice support. There are a lot of sounds. I keep looking at the camera like you all can see me. We're not going to get into this too much. And I don't know how to play. We're just gonna show you guys a little bit, get to where we can do something. Ah, phone style, enter in your name. This is what I'm hoping David Harley does with Super Pro Horse Racing, where you can enter in names. Oh boy, I clicked the wrong one. Oh, there we go, phew. I don't have an overlay and I don't remember all of them. I did pretty good there, I guess. So now I've got my name. Oh, I didn't even pay attention. I put my first name only. <laughs> do you have an account? Oh, see, I can't do this. I wonder if I can do this later. I hope. Welcome to your new business. The bank will advance you $10,000. See, there's where I could have got my money. I hope I didn't screw up myself for uh, getting my money for ordering the game. 63 hearse, enter to buy, energy detector, marshmallow sensor, slots left. Now, I don't, man, that's been so long. I don't know if I'm supposed to put more things on it or not, but let's go. With, oh, need at least one trap. Well, where the heck? Where are the traps? Oh, here we go. Never mind. Ghost bait, traps. You need the vacuum. Two slots left, I guess traps. I don't know the strategy behind this. Insufficient funds. I'm broke. All right, guys, those ghosts are not gonna bust themselves. I'm going to let it play a little bit. Great music there. kind of remember how to play this. I don't know. I don't know what I push here. Do I just have to... When I vacuum up the ghost, I don't know if I have to push a button or if I just have to get under it. Oh, boy. Oh, I crossed it. 
Ah! Oh. My first attempt in failure. Backpack sorted out. Go back to headquarters. I probably should have played this a little bit, but I wanted the first time to be on. I didn't know what was going to happen or, you know, show it off. I didn't want to cheat. <laughs> I guess I could drive around. I forgot. Drive around a little bit longer and... Here we go. Oop. So now maybe we can suck up one of those ghosts. Let's see. There it is. Oh, you have to push the side button. I didn't see it moving at first, so I pushed the side button and sucked them right up. Got him! Second time successful. That sounds like Mike. Anyone else confirm? Doesn't that sound like Mike? Mike's Gaming Gala? <laughs> there we go. This game, for an Intellivision game, this game looks amazing. Why did we come here again? What did I do? <laughs> oh, what a moron. So, what do you guys think? I'm sure most of you have seen it already, but this game, I was so excited to get it in any form I could. I got slimed. I, I don't know how to bring the other guy in. Maybe I need to. Woo, I'm all green. How are the sounds? Are they loud enough? It's a little lower than my other game was. I don't know what that key is. I forgot. Got to get those ghosts. Like I said, it's been decades since I've played Ghostbusters. I don't know what that key was either. This is definitely a game I'm going to be streaming and playing a lot of. As soon as I find some time. My uh, Racing Point series... Out of town ends this Saturday. Oh, again! I need to figure out if I can move the other guy in. I don't know what that was in front of the building either. I've got a little bit of money here. I'm just going to... Oh, I was looking over at chat. I'm just going to play this a little bit longer, guys, because we still have... Man, I'm not even going to have time to do that. It's already 8.45 my time. It's going to be a quick one. Got him! Ghostbusters! Sounds are great. That is Michael. <laughs> All right, guys. So what do you think? I think this game is pretty damn cool. Let me switch back over here. All right. So kind of went longer on everything. But we can just do this next part a little bit quicker. So let me get over here. The Homebrew Awards, I want to show you guys. I'm sure a lot of you have already voted. If you haven't and you know some of these games, go vote. You have to be an Atari Age member. 
let me pull up the screen here. I do have that one ready to go. So there is a link, and I'll put it in the description just in case. Uh, here's what it's going to be when you get there in Television and Homebrew Awards for 2023. So what you're going to do, each one of these categories, I can see myself. I'm the last one on some of these to reply. You have to go into each one of these. All right, can you guys see my mouse? Do you guys see my mouse on the screen? I can't tell because it's on my screen. Can you guys see where I'm pointing? Someone let me know before I use that as a... Anybody? I know there's a little bit of delay. Can you guys see my mouse pointing at things or do I not have that set up? Anyway, the top one, 2023 game of the year. You're going to click this. I've already voted. So you can have discussions. You can be a part of the chat there. Uh, what will show right here, it says the results are hidden because I voted right away. Uh, 24 members have voted already for the game of the year. All the choices that were there, and I, and I have those choices because I had to figure it out because I knew they weren't going to show on mine. So for game of the year, you've got Dragon Quest, Super Mario Bros., Pitfall 3, Return to the Caverns, Caverns of Mars, Thunder Soldier, Yars Revenge, Xor, X-Rally, Stop the Express. So a lot of great choices there. Those are what is up for game of the year. So what you do is you're going to click the game whenever you log in, and then you'll hit the back button, or you can probably go up to hit the topic somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure where it's at. Oh, here it is. Right here. Click in Television Homebrew Awards right above the title there. Hopefully you can see my mouse. If not, then you're going to go down to the next one. Best artwork, packaging, and extras. And you're going to vote for there. And for that one, packaging, that one was Ghostbusters Deluxe. Not the Ghostbusters I just showed you. Uh, let me see if we can see it here behind me. Uh, it's kind of small. Right there. Dino's Game, Inti Home. Big, huge highly collectible version of Ghostbusters. That is the game that is on this one. And then Dragon's Quest, Lock and Chase 8K, Tron Anthology, and Amigo Cornhole. That is, those are the games for best physical packaging. Go back here. Then you've got best port or conversion. Now, all of you guys know what ports are. And when they take another game from another console and bring it over to the Intellivision. So those are, I should have had these in order, but I do not. Best port, Super Mario Brothers, Dragon Quest, Caverns of Mars, Pitfall 3, Return to the Caverns, and Yars Revenge. And you can see I posted in a lot of these. Uh, I do that somewhat just to try to get other people to talk. And so... I, uh, anytime anyone says anything, I'll get an email saying that someone left a comment. I like to read them all. All right. Next up, we have best hack. So there are only a few people that do the hacks. Michael Hayes, who should still be in the chat. He's one. Uh, David Harley of Intelligent Vision. He is another. Um, I'm not sure if I know of anyone else. So the hack, the best hack. Those games are going to be Tron Anthology, Lock and Chase, Revenge of Lupin, Striker Super Pro Bowling. Uh, oh, boy. I don't, there was a two things on there. I don't know if that was a mess up. I think there was five. Is it Rock'em Sock'em? And Melody Blaster 2. And that one we're going to be showing here in a bit. So best action game. So we have Super Mario Bros, Pitfall 3, Return to the Caverns, Thunder Soldier, Caverns of Mars, X-Rally, Yars Revenge. Those are the action games that made the final cut. Next up, we have Best Original Game. Now, I agree with Mike last year, and whether it was because of all the delays on the games with COVID and different things that happened, 
Last year, we had a lot more original games. There was a lot smaller list this year for original games. So this year, we have Thunder Soldier, Pumpkin Trilogy, Mr. Chess, Amigo Cornhole, and Mr. Turtle. Those are the choices you have for best original game for 2023. Best graphics. Uh, only a few more categories here. Best graphics. Where'd you go? Dragon's Quest, Super Mario Brothers, Pitfall 3, Return to the Caverns, Thunder Soldier, and Stop the Express. All right. Last one. Sound and music. Super Mario Brothers, Dragon Quest, Pitfall 3, Return to the Caverns, or sorry, yeah, Return to the Caverns, Caverns of Mars, and Pumpkin Trilogy. So there you guys have it. You know where to go. If you haven't voted, go do it. All your votes should count. Uh, let's see. Does it tell? Each one, it tells you uh, how many people voted. Where do we go here? 29 members have voted for best artwork. It's cool to see that. I, I think that's more people than voted last year, which is a good thing. So now I'm going to show you. I have all these games lined up to play. Again, we're not going to do any kind of lengthy games. We are going to play all of the games once. Get back over here. Shut this off. Let me see here. Only when it's moving. So if I stop... It would just disappears, but if I'm moving on to something, it would show you the mouse. Okay. I, I don't know because on my computer, it just shows me the same mouse I'm always using. All right. So I have a little list here, uh, one from each category. I'm not going to play each one from each category. I'm going to go in order except for Melody Blaster 2 because I have to hook up some stuff really quick to do that one. I just kind of made a note if I'm going to play it on cart or digital because some of them I don't have digital. So the first one I'm going to play is Amigo Cornhole, and I'm going to play on my Intellivision 2. Switch it over here. It'll be fairly quick, because most of them are digital. Switch over my camera. I'm going to quickly show you guys all the games that we're voting on. Thank you, Cyrus. I really appreciate all you do for the community on these shows. Casey, you're like a gamer who likes in television or something. <laughs> yes. Anyway, thank you. I appreciate that, sir. Just trying to help out. I enjoy talking about it. You know, we go on these different shows and, you know, then I started my own show. Um, you know, to be honest, a lot of this stuff I wasn't touching. I was spending all my time doing other things, collecting and playing some. Now I play all these different games, show them off, learn about them. Uh, I enjoy that part of it. I'm a good organizer. Uh, I, I hope that people find value in it because that's the whole point of doing it. So if you can't, if you didn't notice the G in Amigo and Amico, you know that's a clever little thing he did. Amigo cornhole, Amico cornhole, back and forth. This is Harvey five eleven under. He also brought us the RTO flash cart that I have shown you guys before. We had him on this show briefly. Uh, coming up soon, I got to get back in touch with him. We're going to have him back on, and we are going to do a full show showing off everything he does, future plans. That should be interesting. So let me see here. One player, number of rounds. So here you have the screen. The one that's moving, I believe that is the angle. Oh, what the heck? Talk about a lucky shot. So I forgot you. I think then the right, the right of my guy, I believe that's wind or is that me moving? So there's power left and right. Hey, I don't know if I've ever made any before. So this is like, I don't know if you guys remember, most of us are close to the same age, that game, uh, old Apple two, where you just have, wind and you have your power and angle when you try to shoot each other that's what this reminded me of but i like it it's simple but I, I i do enjoy playing it i've only played it a little bit so now the wind is a little the opposite way i think i went the right way here 
Oh, a little too far, but I did go the right way. Oh, oh, I forgot the wind moved. You got to check the wind each time you go. Okay, so now I should be where I was. Power. Oh, too far. Oh, boy, I misjudged that one. So you kind of get it. You've got a wind that changes. You've got your guy. It shows you the cornhole box over to the right. You have your angle left and right aiming <clears throat> to compensate for the wind. And you've got your power meter going up and down right there. Very cool game. Very uh, The box is just full of uh, things making fun of the Amico in a light, fun way. It's not meant to be you know, derogatory. It's just, it was a fun thing and it was good timing. So there is Amigo Cornhole. So next, really quickly, I'll show you how quick I can do this. I am switching back to the ultimate flashback. Boom, there it is. We are gonna play Caverns of Mars. I love this game. This might be really loud now. David says, ah, I remember that game. Wasn't it called Scorch Earth? I don't remember. There was a real simple version on the Apple II. If that's what, I think that's what you're talking about. I, I can't remember. I mean, that was in the mid-80s for me. I don't remember. I remember liking it. It was fun. I remember being good at it. So here is Caverns of Mars. Uh, start, novice. Let's just do start. I'm not playing a long time anyway. I really like this game as well. I think it plays well. It looks good. I haven't gotten terribly far in it, but fairly decent. I don't know if if that's the one I played. Is that the one on Apple II, guys? I don't know how I looked over and didn't die. Using the side button to shoot left and right. I can go up and down as well. Hit any walls, you die. Oh, side to side action didn't work for me there. Trying to focus here. Ah. Well, you guys get the idea. This is just meant to be a quick show you the game if you haven't seen it. Let's get out of here. So next up is Dragon's Quest. I'm sure everyone's seen that, especially you know on the NES. Um, I wasn't a huge RPG guy. I did play all the way through Zelda on NES. Let's see, Dragon's Quest should be right there. I'll just show you what it looks like. You can hear it a little bit. There it is. This is a phenomenal port. You would almost swear you're playing on the NES. New quest. Oh boy. I'm just gonna do a quick version. KC. Oh, KCC, I guess. Message speed fast. Descendant of Edric, listen now to my words. Nah, I'm not going to do the words. I just want to show you guys the game. Quick, quick versions. Quick versions. Show it off and move on. This one has... As soon as I get outside, I'll move on. Uh, Item? Oh, I forgot what to do here. Search. 
Treasure box. Oh my gosh. Take. Ah, there we go. I did try this game once, but I kind of forgot. Couple chests to take. Torch. As you can see, it looks great, it sounds great. Controls great. Kind of give you a little bit of, if you haven't seen it. Go outside, do find something to attack. And then we will move on. Here we go. Fight! That's what I want to see. What do you guys think of this game? Had you already seen it before for the Intellivision? What do you think? I think they did a great job on this. All right, let's move on. All right, so next up, oh man, I got. Let me just. I'm gonna do all the carts at one time. Eh, I can go back and forth pretty quick. So we are gonna do, and I gotta show you this. For those of you that haven't seen it, let me uh, switch over real quick. So check this out. This is the Ghostbusters special edition, the one you see right here. The one that came out a while back from Dino, NT Home. This is a 3D printed cart and it lights up. So this thing definitely looks cool. It's hard to see this way, but when you turn it, this is definitely cool. So I have not tried this before. I had to open, I haven't unboxed it. I just opened it so I could grab the cart out. It's the only way I could show it all like I said I was going to. Oh man, I don't have a camera to show. This thing is lighting up blue. Let me switch back over now, guys. So again, this is a different home or Ghostbusters than the one I showed you earlier. Yep, it definitely is. Michael Hayes says, I had fun cracking the code, but yeah, excellent port. Cyrus says, the technical wizardry behind implemented with these homebrews is absolutely astonishing. You would be correct, sir. William says, what? We believe you? <laughs> be nice, sir. <laughs> okay, let's get into this. I don't know. Okay. So here is the load your car screen. I don't know if I'm if it's putting it. Oop. Oh, I don't have enough. Press enter. Woo! This game is up for packaging. Oh, I missed him. I got slimed. All right. That's a good, you pretty much saw everything there. We saw the loading screen. We saw that we see the town here. We went and went after one of the ghosts. You've seen the car right here. 
That is Ghostbusters Special Edition. Up for packaging. All right, Lock and Chase 8K, switching back to the ultimate flashback. Got to love these HDMI boxes. Boom, right back. And this is another one that I'm not too good at this one. I didn't have it as a kid. I can play it. I kind of know how to play it, but. And this is the version with the collapsing Lupin. I, AK version, collapsing Lupin. I, I don't know if there's other changes. Michael or anyone that knows, let me know if what else is different in this game, if anything. And again, we all know Lock and Chase. I'm just going to go around a little bit. I'm going to die so you can see the collapsing Lupin. Here we go. I'm going to die here. You can see him collapse into his hat. We'll do it one more time in case you missed it. I'm going to die here as soon as they come back. Collapsing into his hat. So there you go. This is Lock and Chase, AK Collapsing Lupin. So next up, we have Lock and Chase, Revenge of Lupin. Next one down. And that one I do have sitting here behind me. Intelligent Vision presents Lock and Chase Revenge of Lupin. Lots of options here. Quick second to look at that. Here's Michael. The AK version has proper copyright symbols and a reference to Data East. Lupin is supposedly easier to control. Oh, yes. Thank you. But I never noticed a difference. I don't know if it's because you really know how to play the game or I, I remember hearing about the control being easier. I, I don't have a opinion one way or the other. I'll have to try both and see if I can tell. So this is the sequel, right? Revenge of Lupin. You can see the board is different here. I don't know what other differences there are. If someone wants to throw it in the comments, Michael, I'm sure you know. Let's see if he collapses. I don't need to play too much of this. He does! I figured he would in this one. Oops, sorry, he left that on there. Give it a quick second here again. One more time, collapsing looping. I don't know how I got through them that time. This one has a lot of options that you don't see in the other one. All right, so next up, we're going to skip Melody Blaster 2. It's Mr. Chess. I have played this one time, and I lost to the monkey, <laughs> which was the first guy. I can play chess a little bit, and I'm not going to sit here and play the whole game, of course. We're going to show it to you. This is a great chess game for the Intellivision, and it is very quick until you get to the later levels. William says, I wonder what Papa Intellivision would think of Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition or the Pandora Incident and games like AF. Uh, I'm sure he would be very impressed with a lot of the games that are put out in the community today. A lot of yours are phenomenal as well, of course. Um, I have them all. But yeah, there's so many great games. It is hard to keep up playing them, let, buying them, let alone playing them. Yeah, different levels, Sean. So here is chess. I'm going to play just a little bit here. Boom. See if I can 
let him get checkmate real quick. We all either know how to play this or we don't. Don't need to show much gameplay on chess, but I want to see what happens when I lose. Yeah, William says uh, the original 125 game US CF chess needed extra RAM and was slow. It was. <laughs> All right, so we're getting close here. Come on. Um... Oh, I'm in check. Uh, that should. No, not yet. Come on, I'm trying to lose here. <laughs> Sir, that was three years before I was born, but I did play chess a little bit as a kid. Um, I played a little bit in high school. And I used to play with my wife's grandfather and my father-in-law, but sadly he passed about, man, what was it, 11, 12 years ago? And none of us really played since. I do have a really nice chess table with chairs and, the, you know, the big kind of two-person table and all the really big, like, I don't know, four-inch pieces. It's, it's something you would see in, like, a cafe or something. It's pretty cool. Come on. Give me checkmate. My king is pretty much locked in this spot. Anyone just popping in? We're just quickly going through all the games that are in for an award for the 2023 Homebrew Awards on Atari Age. Links will be in the description for you to go vote. Uh, whether you just want to vote for a few categories, vote for the whole thing, whatever you want to do, go vote. Make your opinion count. I thought this was going to be easy to get. There we go. Oh. <sighs> I'll try a few more times and I'm moving on. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys when you lose. Just move right there. Oh no, that piece. And I can't move it right now because he's down there. Should have moved that bishop. I know, C-Mart. I'm trying to lose. <laughs> I want to show what it does. This is ridiculous that it takes that long. All right. Where 
Where the heck can I? Oh, I can't. I just can't move. Checkmate already. There we go. Checkmate. Black wins. I thought it did something else. All that for that? <laughs> I was. I must be thinking of something else. All right. Sorry, guys. Uh, Mr. Turtle. That's cartridge. Switch that out. Don't want to break my Ghostbusters. So this is a game from Collector Vision that I had high hopes for when I first saw it. Um, I'll be honest. I, I don't I find it very difficult to play. One second here while it comes up. Helps when you have it on the right HDMI port. So it lets you pick. You have water, forest, cave, snow, and swamp. Just do water. Hopefully this is the right controller. So you've got the turtle. Oh. And I shot my thing off. I shouldn't have did that. Here's another one. And I ran out of air. I find the control hard. Uh, when you're moving screens, weird things happen with the bad guys. I feel like this could have been a really good game. I'm not really sure what happened. Some air. And I'm dead already. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> I had a really hard time with this one. <laughs> I might have been thinking of a different freaking game. Video of the Smurf game on Intellivision. What just happened there? Seymour, I have no idea. Try to play this game and you'll know what just happened. Box looks great. Label looks great. Let me show you. I'll just do one more quick area. And that'll be it for Mr. Turtle. We'll do Forest. And I know a turtle. Look at a turtle climbing a tree. And I died. I don't know why I died. Maybe I fell on that. No idea. All right. There is Mr. Turtle. Now Pitfall 3. We are switching back to the ultimate flashback. This one I have played. Before it came out, I had a copy, and I was one of the lucky ones to show it off. What am I doing? Pitfall 3. Uh-oh, I forgot. There's a few of them here. Uh... And what just happened there is I quickly went through that game. <laughs> I think it could have been good. I love having this guy run across. I thought that was a cool little touch. So these are checkpoints. And when you go through one and touch it, when you die, you'll go back to the checkpoint you last touched, not all the way back to the beginning. There's some gold down there. So you're going for score, you want to collect gold, different things. Uh, there's a lot to collect, or, you know, to explore. Uh oh. So whenever you get hit, you go back to the last one of these little checkpoints. It is just like any other Pitfall 3, but on the Intellivision. I have gotten fairly far. I mean, I guess I don't know if I got really far in the overall 
grand scheme of the game, but fairly far, I think. <laughs> oh, I thought I could make it. All right, well, you get the idea. Pitfall 3, there it is. Uh, Pumpkin Trilogy. So this started out as mini games for... Which uh, Pitfall 3 is from Rev and Television Revolution. I'm not sure if there's any up right now. Anyone that wants a game, uh, you need to just let me know and I can reach out and figure it out. But Pitfall 3 definitely will be available again. It's not like gone. Uh, no, it's not. Very hard to get, Kurt. So for Rev, you can watch his eBay, uh, Cyber Carolina. And if you ask me, I can give you the link to it on eBay. Um, he also has, of course, the website. Um, I don't. Last I checked, they weren't listed on there, but I probably should have looked before the show. All right, next up, Pumpkin Trilogy. Bunch of fun little mini games. That's what they started as. And now it is a complete CIB game. So that one will be available again, too. Not sure when. I can reach out for an update. Um, he's really busy trying to complete the Intelli Club. You know, it's like we, all, we all only have so much free time. And that's what he's focusing on right now, I believe. All right, so there's three games in here. We'll quickly show you each one. Pumpkin Master. Pop through all this. It's a shooter. It's like Galaga. Only pumpkins. I like shooters. Oh, almost died there. Oh, you can hold it. You can hold it down. Much better. So here's a boss. I thought this was kind of cool. I wanted to play till at least I showed you guys this. There you go. Lots of different things. You can play this one for a while. We will go ahead and reset it. Show you the next one. This is from Homebrew Inc., obviously. We are going to go to Pumpkin Mischief. Game two. Again, if you guys are just popping in, we're going through all the games that are up for an award for the Homebrew Awards on Atari Age. I don't know if I... I think this might be the one I haven't played. Oh, I've played it. I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to do in this game. I'll just show it. What the heck? I thought I was in a loop or something. <laughs> this is the one I didn't know what to do. So there is something that can kill you. <laughs> oh, and he chases you. Lovely. So you get the idea. I don't know how to play it or what you're doing, but you can see it. There's a disc. I don't know. Did you get those things? I don't know. All right, let's move on to the next one. Third game. Pumpkin Attack. Game three. I have seen and played this one before. It's another shooter. A side-scrolling shooter. This is our type. <laughs> all right, that's pretty much all you need to see. I mean, three mini games, pumpkin theme for the holidays, one complete collection. Music's great, the games play nice. I've had no control issues. 
there you have it. Pumpkin Trilogy. All right, we're getting through these. Next up, Rock'em Sock'em. That's another one for the cart. I, I have that ROM, I think. Maybe I don't, but it's not loaded on there. Let me catch up here. David says, holy cow, that looks like E.T. on a rocket. <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em Super Pro Boxing. I've seen DJC play this. I have not tried mine yet. I had to open open up one of my games. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, why isn't it working? I have the ultimate flashback controller in my hand. Yeah, that works a lot better. <laughs> Club fight. I know there's lots of different options. Uh, remember, like, in blue. Oh, boy. I don't remember how to play. Looks a lot the same, like a lot of the hack games. It's just a lot of refined gameplay, different options, makes the game you already knew and loved better. I'm not going to pretend that I know what the heck I'm doing. It's been decades since I've played this, or boxing, I mean. About to get knocked out. So there is Rock'em Sock'em. I, I wish I could speak on some of the upgrades that David did. I didn't have that list prepared for tonight how about that you see how quick my intelligence 2 turns off it is modded from jesse of ivory tower collections i had it recapped all things done inside and i had the reset switch to it's almost as soon as you push it you can let go i hated having to hold that button down There you have it, Kurt. PM William, your email. All right, what's up next? Stop the Express. Back to the other one. Now, here's another one. I have played it for a few minutes. I don't know what to do. I can play it a little bit, show it. This is Homebrew Inc. as well. He just threw me off. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Yep, I wish I could show you a little bit more of this, but you get to see the game a little bit. <laughs> Am I supposed to jump down? Nope. Oh, I was supposed to get that, I guess. I've been avoiding him. <clears throat> oh. All right, there is Stop the Express. Unfortunately, I can't show you any more than that because I don't know what I'm doing. Striker Super Pro Bowling. This one, I do know what I'm doing. I have eight weeks into the bowling league. Striker Super Pro Bowling. Oh, I don't think that was the right one. That was the one I renamed when I thought I had the right one. Mine is SP Bowling. There it is. You didn't hear anything? Like you can't hear me talking or you couldn't hear game sounds? So this is Striker Super Pro Bowling. Another Intelligent Vision uh, hack. Sped it up added things, made it where you couldn't, you know, kind of cheat. We'll do bowling slickness zero. One bowler, 16, right-handed. Should do the left-handed thing. Oh. Hey, a gutter ball to start it off. <laughs> that happens when you push the 7 o'clock or or sorry, uh, five or four o'clock on the disc 
on accident when you're trying to push six o'clock. Should not do that one again. Would have had a strike. That was my first ball. I believe I ended the league with the second highest average. Papa Pete and I were back and forth. Uh, he had a phenomenal final night, and I just bowled about my average. He had the high series, high average, and his team won. But tonight, or Thursday night, we're doing five games. We're all pretty good at it now. Winner takes all for one series. Steve Reich. Yes, this game is familiar. Can you guys hear me? Did you hear do you hear the game sounds? Just want to make sure after what uh, William said. Probably be the last frame. You guys get it. This is bowling. Just a better version. Oh, I think that oh got it. Whoo! I was like, that'll be a good note to end it on. <laughs> All right. Okay, it was on your end. I've had a I've had a little bit of technical difficulties tonight with OBS, so <laughs> I got a little worried. Little low. Yeah, the game's changed. I gotta go up and down on the volumes. Well, there is Striker Super Pro Bowling. I've had a lot of fun playing it with the guys. Super Mega Graphics in here uh, was my teammate. He came a long way from when we started. He's actually a good bowler now. He had never, I mean, I had never played this before either, but they taught me. And with a lot of practice, we did okay. So there's Super Pro Bowling. Uh, I love this version. I've had a lot of fun with it. So now we're going to play Super Mario Brothers. Another game I grew up playing. I love that game. Now it's loud when we get back here. Where did I miss it? There it is. This is a phenomenal port. Super Mario Brothers. Never would have thought it would be possible on the television. My gosh, did someone do a good job on this. Oh, crap. It wants a certain controller. Is that one too loud now, guys? Yeah, that's that's got to be. <laughs> it's like super loud over here. So for those of you that have not seen this before, oops, where is it? They did a great job. Missed it. I mean, obviously, there's a little bit of differences with how everything works, but the whole game is here. And I'm I'm a little awkward. I'm playing with it. I can't show you, but I'm playing with... I mean, I can show you, but it's not on the screen. I'm playing with a different controller, and I don't know where the run button is. There it is. Nope. Can't push them both. What the heck? I promise you I hit the jump button. <laughs> oh no! Down the hole. So there you have it, Super Mario Brothers. If you can find this one, it is a great game, and it plays really well. Ignore my gameplay right there. Next up, we were down to the last few. Thunder Soldier. It's another fun game. I believe this game started out as a proof of concept, but I could be wrong on that, and it turned into a, a good game. Homebrew Inc. We'll do easy, just so I can show you a little bit of it without dying. 
I'm not going to read all this. Normally I would when I first play. So you jump using the disc. I always want to push a button. What is that? Parallax scrolling or is that is that what it's called? I'm butchering that term. No. I don't know how far it takes if you can get to the, the boss or we'll just give it a minute here. This game is up for a few different categories. Including best original game of the year. Oh, I got hit. Oh! Have you guys played this? What do you think so far? Oh, I'm dead. Well, I'm not going to keep going. The whole point of this is just show them off so you can see them if you haven't. This is Thunder Soldier. Next up, Tron Anthology. I was the first one, I believe, to have this one as well. I was showing it off. Uh, Papa Pete and I did a video. That was my first time working on videos. Mostly it was Papa Pete, but I was involved. <laughs> that was Thunder Soldier, sir. I can show you the game when I come back on camera. I've got it right here behind me. Another game I got at PRGE this year. So this one is great. It is four games in one. The ROM costs you $5 on Intellivision.us. You cannot go wrong. If you love Tron games, go pick it up. Uh, I don't think the complete in-box games are coming back. I could be wrong. Real quick, we'll go through each one. There's four of them. This is Adventures of Tron. This is the game that what I Papa Pete and I each had two games to play. Gotta get those. You have to cross to. Oh boy. Cross to go up the elevator. Oh no! I should have pushed down on that. You can push down and go back down a level. Uh, this is. What is it the for the Atari? For I'm having a brain fart. Can't think of uh, what those games are called. So I can push down and go back and go back up. Oh, there's a tank, and it got me. I want to at least get through one of these. Show you guys the exit. Whenever you get all the, oh, whoo, I made it. So when you get that and you get the last one, you jump in the middle when it lights up and you go on to the next level. I, I really enjoyed this game. Uh, I hadn't played it before. This is the only unchanged game. But this one wasn't on the Intellivision, so it remained the original form. But other three games have improvements and hacks. Let's move on to one of those. Oop, I went all the way out. Yes, Tron Anthology. Uh, I don't know about completing the box, but you can get the ROM. It's only $5. I believe it's still $5. I don't think this one's free. So here is Deadly Disc. Deadlier Disc. This is a lot harder. The disc also kills on the return, which is the big thing I noticed. And you can't get near as far. This was a game I... Or not this one, but Tron Deadly Discs. I had it as a kid. I love this game. See that? Smacked them on the return. So you have the recognizer will come out. You get very far at all. The recognizer comes out right away. Just wanted to show you guys a little bit. Darker, you'll see the darker colors right away the first thing I noticed. Everything's harder. So 
So there is Deadlier Disc. Trust me, it's harder than the first one. <laughs> oh, I do have to reset, don't I? Oh, no, I don't. All right, so Mazatron. Now we're getting into two games that I don't even know how to play myself. Yeah, great coupler game for sure. I'm going to show you this a little bit. Again, I don't know. I don't even have a clue how to play this. This is one of the ones Papa Pete played <laughs> because I had no clue. And back then, what, what was this? A year ago? Better? We uh oh, we did learn the differences of what David did to these games, but having not even played the original, you know, I, I really don't know. Doesn't do me any good to keep going on that one. I don't know how to play it. Same with this one. I didn't have Solar Sailor. The only Intellivoice game I had was B-17 Bomber, and I love that game. Sector 5. Energy I don't even know how to move. There we go. Sector 5. Sector 5. Energy Medium. We can hit. So I'm sure those of you that know how to play this, it's just an enhanced version. I have no clue what I'm doing. So there are four games on this. As you can see, great collections. You can't beat $5 if you're using ROMs. If you can get a hold of the CIB, I highly recommend it. So next up, we have X-Rally. This is going to be the longest show ever. We're almost three hours in. <laughs> With the awards just coming out, I wanted to play all the games. Everything else took longer as usual. I didn't want to not play them tonight and wait because the awards just came out. You should be able to get that one. I, I can uh, point you in the right direction, sir. We'll chat. Easy. So this one is someone's first attempt at a game, which was pretty darn impressive, if you ask me. Yep, it's even getting late for me. It's almost 10 o'clock. So this is someone's first attempt, and I do like the game. But for me, it's a little bit choppy for my liking, but the game is good. They did a great job, and this was a first attempt. I mean, I love to see what this guy does next, if this was his first game. Oh! Looking over at the screen. So I'm sure you guys have played this before. There's not a whole lot of reason to keep going. There's a lot of fun gameplay here. That was the other thing. The one other thing I had, I was pushing to the right. And my guy, like, spun around and went back the other way as I'm pushing right. I did have an issue with that and control. It wasn't bad, but it happens. Maybe that's just me not knowing, but I have played other versions of this, and I don't do that. But the game is the game is really fun. So there is X-Rally. Xor. I don't even know how. Is it Xor or Xor? What say you? And television collector. Guy's on my shirt tonight. Oh, sorry, guys. Wrong one. <laughs> Thought I, I think I hit the disc, or maybe I didn't. Thought I hit the disc and hit the button. Must not have paid attention. And television revolution. This one uh, is one you can pick up and play a little bit. I'm not going to say I know a lot about it, but you can pick it up and play it. Wasn't it? I believe this was Deckel. Is this the game from Deckel? Michael, you probably know. Oh, right there. Yes. I think Deckel settled it with Zor. To me, it's Xor. That's what I called it at first, too. Then someone said Zor. 
I think we can call it whatever we want. <laughs> Mass cut, top scores. So you go around collecting all these masks. Again, I wasn't really prepared. To, some of the games I know a little bit about, I would have had to do like a lot of research to have that kind of information tonight. I more or less just wanted to show the games. You could see them, hear them, play them a little bit. This goes by moves, I think. Oh, not yet. So I've got six more, five more. And it goes by move, so you have to find them. I think it's down here. I don't think I, I don't remember what that is. I think they're down to the right. There they are. It up here and there is the out fun little game all right there's Zor or Xor whatever you want to call it we've got one more and then we're gonna go to Michael's probably favorite one tonight Yard's Revenge is up next. Have you played Atari today? Kinda, I guess. I'm sure I didn't miss anything here. Another fun game. Uh, I have a lot of fun on my Switch with the recharge version of this game. Oh, this is another one that wants the other controller. Right into him. This controller has a friggin' thumbstick. Got him! I'm sure most of you... Hey, hey, Jeff, what's going on? You're up late, buddy. <laughs> I'm almost up late. Right now, we're almost to the end. We're going through all the homebrews that are up for awards. That was what I... Did for the main thing for the show earlier we had bd retro mods on talking about the controllers he makes for Intellivision and other consoles showed off a lot of things played ninja odyssey for the homebrew highlight oh i don't know if i like the thumbstick on this game Didn't mean to do that. All right. Well, you guys know this game. It's not like it's something new. There is that one. Now we're down to the last one. And then we're going to call it a night. I got to switch over here. I got to put the keyboard up. Let me switch over for a minute here. All right, so we're going to do the last one. is going to be Melody Blaster 2. This is a hack from Michael Hayes in the chat. He's, a lot of people haven't seen this one yet because you have to have a keyboard to play it. So, Michael, I'm going to need your help on this one, buddy. Uh, let me get it on here. So, for this one, 
It was the cart. Everything's in the way. Give me a second, guys. I need to hook up the ECS so I can hook up the keyboard. All the cords are under all these uh, controllers that I plopped down earlier. I had it nice and neat where I could just grab it and then I put everything on there. All right. ECS hooked up. Keyboard hooked up. Everything's plugged in. Melody Blaster. All right. Keyboard. Recently acquired. Got a hot tip from Rev. Said, hey, go get the keyboard. By default, the computer plays both hands, so you can just preview each song and not earn points. Okay. Jeff saying hello to everyone. All right, so let me switch over here. Let me see, get it back up. There we go. So it's on ECS. Let me switch the camera back over. That might help. So I go into this and I put cartridge number two. And here is the title screen, Inti Lab. That is right here in chat. Michael Hayes, Melody Blaster 2. Now there's a lot of cool songs in this one. How do I cycle through the songs, Michael? And maybe you can talk a little, you know, put a few things in there. I'm playing great, aren't I? The right key bad changes tunes. Okay, that explains why I couldn't do before. Because I have the BD Retro Mods joystick hooked up to that side. It was on the ground. Right keypad changes tunes. There we go. I got it now. Try playing that. <laughs> I, w I was pushing the wrong thing. Wonder as I wander. Carol of the Bells. I Has anyone played this on YouTube yet? I don't think I've seen it. Pac-Man cutscene. Power of He-Man. Bomb Squad. Michael says, Slowdown is the fault of the original game engine. It can't handle too many notes at a time. Tunes are exactly 18 characters in length. That's why I had to truncate the title in Wonder As I Wander. Forgot where I was. There we go. Bomb Squad. Did I do the first one? So there you guys have it. A little sneak peek at Melody Blaster. I guess I could have did that without the keyboard if I wasn't playing. It would have been easier. Yes, that was not me playing, guys. <laughs> oh, sorry about that screen. Let me switch back over here. All right, there you have it. 
all the games that you guys are going to be voting on, we kind of went through them all. It took a while, but people watching on the rerun, it can uh, do it in parts. Don't have to do the whole thing at once. Uh, I wanted to show them all off. The awards were new. So there you have it. Clear and zero are for tunes 10, 11. Oh, I missed those. I already unplugged it all. <laughs> I'll have to, Rev wants me to show them some things and send them some videos. So I'm going to have to play it again uh, shortly for him. I'm going to leave it all down there, in fact. And I'm going to try to actually play it. Uh, so that's going to be a show for tonight. If you stuck around, I appreciate it. This is show 10. Next week, we have show number 11. Like I said, we're going to have the week's news. We're going to have a homebrew highlight, a uh, mail call. I think I got a few things coming, and we're going to focus this episode. If you want to know how to mod your DSi to play in television games, we're going to show you everything about it, how to do it. I've got three of them over there. I'm going to pick one, and I'm going to mod one of mine. And if you need any help after that, I'll be glad to help you because Rick is going to tell us everything we need to know. And I want to thank you guys for watching and we will see you next week. Uh, it's going to be 6:45 again. I've got a few shows set up with people already. And then after that, I'll let everyone know we're going to move to Mondays on our own day. No one else around us and start an hour earlier. So we don't have to be up as late. Uh, even I am up right at my bedtime right now. And I didn't get to say goodnight to anyone. Everyone else is asleep. <laughs> so thank you guys. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.